Alrighty, everybody, welcome to another episode of Game Core. This is the one and only gaming podcast that you will ever need. I am your host once again. My name is Matt Hedrick, and here with me, always delighted to be here, probably not, is Chad Porto. How are you, sir? Another day, another, another, just another day. What, what, Didn't what have a want, clever man? delivery on that one. What do you want from me, people? <laughs> I give enough of myself already. I mean, basically. <laughs> I have to put up with this asshole every fucking week. Speaking of assholes. Oh, I'm the asshole. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah. Why do you think I'm always so mean to you? Fucking cunt. I guess it takes one to know one, doesn't it? Well, I mean, you want to go there, we can. <laughs> like you didn't already know you were. Come on. So... They're making a new Scooby Doo, and Elvira's going to be in it. And my okay. only th- my only thought was, didn't that bitch like make a whole reality TV show about passing off the Elvira brand to someone else? Why she still Elvira? I'm just saying. Maybe she couldn't let it go. <laughs> She's fucking seventy. That fucking Elvira goldmine's still coming in. She might be sixty. Elvira. <laughs> That's not how you spell Elvira. That's how you spell Elvira. <laughs> uh, Cassandra Peterson. Uh, she is 68. Nah, it wasn't far off. Yeah, she's going to be uh, yeah. voicing her character in this new Scooby-Doo movie. And uh, Bill Nye, the science guy. Bill. Bill Nye, the science rules. Science rules. Science, <laughs> science rules. Bro, bro, bro. He's going to be in it as well. <laughs> so it's going to be, uh, oh, it's, 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 it's going to be interesting. I like me some Alvira. She, she's, she's my Halloween queen. And, and who doesn't like the Bill Nye? <laughs> it's interesting. I mean, it's, it, it really doesn't surprise me to see him in a Scooby-Doo movie. It just oh. kind of makes sense in a way. So here's the fucking, you want, you want to hear the, uh, the funniest part about this? So wh- who do you think the villain is in, in this Scooby-Doo movie? I'll, I'll let you even go I, with the general platitude of a former Scooby-Doo villain is, is your answer, if that's the way you want to go. So who do you oh, think man, I, the, the villain is? I'm not like that familiar with the series, so I couldn't really take a guess at that for you. Well, I mean, I know the main characters, but villains I don't know. That's what I'm saying. Like, you could just pick the generic answer of a former Scooby-Doo villain, and I, and I will I will let you have that as an answer if that's the answer you want to go with. So, who do you think the villain is? I have no idea. You're like right. I said, I it I is a know. Batman villain. Good job on the guess. I didn't know, asshole. <laughs> you kept putting me on the spot. Well, you weren't supposed to know, because who the fuck would guess that it's a Batman villain? It, it, that's, that's the main villain of a Scooby-Doo movie. Which Batman villain is it? Scarecrow. So at least it, it's like tonally makes uh, sense. Right, like, yeah, I get that. I'm watching the trailer, and they're like, oh, hits escaped Arkham convict uh, 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 Jonathan Crane. I'm like... Roll, Reggie. This is a bad, bad movie. <laughs> They're both owned by Warner Brothers, so that's why the, the, you know they can do it. Um, mm-hmm. I don't know. Like it's gonna be dumb. I'll probably buy it. <laughs> it's a, it's it's gonna be one of those like straight to DVD movies, right? It's yeah, what they usually are. Yeah, it's okay. not like the it's not like the movie that just came out. This is a an, a, a, a conceptually drawn animated film. Like like the old school Scooby Doo's, Scooby Doo Doo, where are you? Got some work to do now. So the last one I remember was like with Batman Brave and the Bold. I think he did one with too, if I remember right. When did he know? I think so. Brave and Bold. Hmm. So. So we're we're reviewing Phantom 2040 tonight. I'm tentative. I'm thinking you're not might not like it. I'm not sure. Bitch, you don't know me. 
that's what I literally just said. <laughs> Bitch, you don't know me. Do I want to, though? Oh, you keep wanting to do this fucking show. That doesn't mean I want to know you. <laughs> Can you show me? Can you teach me about the people like me? Phil Collins, I am not. I, I, I accept this fact. Uh, so it's a game about the Phantom. Uh, if you know anything about the Phantom, you know that it was a movie from like 1993, 4, 5, 95, featuring Billy Zane as the Phantom. Uh, basically, the, the story goes, uh, one day a, a, a dude showed up in the jungles of a, of a place and he's like, hey... What's with all these fucking pirates? And everyone's like, oh. He's like, well, I guess I'll fucking fight the pirates. And then 500 years later, Billy Zane shows up looking to take up the mantle that his, aunt, that his father and his grandfather and great grandfather and great great grandfather and great 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 grandfather and great 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 grandfather and great 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 grandfather all had before him. At some point, a half cousin was the Phantom, but we don't like to talk about that. That was the lean years of the franchise. He only got the role because the great, 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 great grandfather had a real bad case of gout. Oh, jeez. So the movie did not well. I loved it. I I I was reading about that. Yeah, I heard it was not a very successful film. It's it's legitimately one of my favorite things to ever exist in any medium. You got Catherine Zeta-Jones, super low-key, all right, with a, a love triangle it, with uh, Christy Swanson, a.k.a. Mrs. Lassiter. Oh, nice. All right. Uh, you got Billy Zane in the most badass purple suit since Bret Hart. Uh, Treat Williams, who was uh, the, the loving father on, what, what was that dumb show called, Everwood? Tree on the House of the One Hills or some bullshit. One Tree Hill, I think no, you're thinking of? Ever, no, I'm thinking of Everwood. I was right. Okay. Uh, he, was, he was the father on Everwood. And Everwood's like this wholesome... Like it, was, it was a joke in uh, um, Psych. Uh, you, do you guys watch any shows? Well, just Everwood. <laughs> and Sean's like, with Treat Williams? Uh, so... It was one of those movies that, like, it just it just appealed to me. And then it had, like, these magical skulls and shit like that. I was like, this is so fucking cool. And uh, it made $17 million off a $45 million budget. And it was a dead franchise. <laughs> and I was like, well, I know where at least $14 million of that came from. Me. <laughs> Would you say this is, like, a, a cult, like, cult movie then? Or it's, something, it's, like, it's, kind of similar to that? Or no? Fucking come hang out with me. It's a fun call. We're fucking watching uh, the goddamn Phantom. So you're the person who spent seventeen million dollars to watch this movie. Goddamn right. <laughs> but before the movie came out, there was a cartoon called Phantom Twenty Forty. Mm. Mm. And that's what the game that we're playing and reviewing is based off of. Was the TV show that I never actually watched, but I may just watch mm. the first few episodes tonight. Uh, because it's it's a thing. Now, here's the funny thing. The Phantom in, in the 2040 is Kit Walker Jr. The Phantom in the movie is Kit Walker. That's 100 years apart. 110 hmm. years apart. I don't think Kit Walker Sr. popped this dude out on his 90th birthday, but maybe Kit Walker Sr. was a fucking P-I-M-P. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe he was fucking Hugh Hefner his, his way around Ultra City or whatever the fuck it's called. I, I I mean I could buy it. Still pulling it down at ninety. Damn. Right? Fucking skill. Badass, man. Skill. That's like Dick Van Dyke. Banana, banana. I guarantee you Dick Van Dyke has like forty five kids. And like Holy forty shit. of them were, were like in the last two years. God, I'm 98. I I can take my teeth out, but I ain't pulling out. <laughs> I probably forgot how to. <laughs> I'm 98. The only thing that's coming out is these dentures. 
I don't pull anything else out, baby. Get ready for some of that Van Dyke dick. You're going to have to do all the work, but get ready for it. If you go too hard, you'll break your hip, but I promise you, I'll break anything else. Oh, fuck. Oh, no need, no need for the medicine. I'm already all drugged up. Don't worry. If you break my hip, it's already. It's only because I've already broken yours. Because this Dick Van Dyke has got the Vike Dick Van stuff. Oh, God. He's senile. He can't finish his words. Fuck off. No, this is disturbing. Jesus. So I don't remember <laughs> Phantom Twenty Four ever being that big of a show, or mm-hmm. having that big of a fan base. Uh, it did have a comic book. It did have video games. I wonder if it had action figures. It's it's possible because it was a uh, Saturday morning cartoon. It looks like we may have had some toys, but they look like they're like generic pop guns mm. and like a, a flashlight. It looks like we do have toys from the Phantom movie though. And, of course, we have custom-made toys. So, yeah, it never got the love that it deserved as, as a franchise. Because it's very much what they used to call a pulp hero. Mm. Where a lot of what he did was, you know, um, take down the mobs and fight Chrysimes. You know, the fun stuff. Now, this, was, this wasn't a hero that actually had, like, any, like, power or anything, right? Like a... Like, no, the the entire idea okay. of the ghost who walks and the and the ghost who can never die or whatever the man who can never die was that they would always find a new phantom to take up the mantle. In the movie, um, mm. the guy who played uh, he's he, he played Way, uh, Wayland Utani, I think, at one point. Hang on, let's see. Mm. It's a movie. I, I, I want to get this right. What what was his name? Is his name. Uh, James Raymar. Mm. He's been in so much shit. He was in uh, Dexter. He was in Sex and the City, Miracle on 34th Street. Uh, he's in Black Lightning currently. Um, he was in Gotham. I know what you're talking about. Is that the, is that, was that Dexter's dad in Dexter? Uh, I, I didn't watch Dexter, so yes. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, <laughs> oh, I thought you did. That's why no. I thought. Oh, you're just looking at a list. Sorry, yes, I'm looking at IMDb. Uh, here he was okay. in. He was in Judge Dredd. Uh, the the '95 one is Block Warlord Monroe. Oh, he was all right. Here you might know this. Uh, he was the second Raiden in Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Yep. That all right? Then I know exactly who that is. <laughs> he was the villain. In, he was the uh, the side, the the henchman, the thug, of. Um, I really like hitting that oog. Remember, uh, what, were, what were those things called? Jugs? Do you remember those? Jugs. They're, they were like the size of a juice box. They were plastic, and they looked like they were like little barrels. Are you talking about, are you talking about hugs? Is that what they were called? Hugs? I think they're called hugs. Well, Jugs was, was a better name. <laughs> anyway, um, I, like, I like that oogs. I think that's one reason why Uggs became popular as a brand. It's just fun to say. Um, but during during a, a, a moment in the, in the beginning of the movie, The Phantom, James Raymar's character uh, like uh, like tries to kill the Phantom and like kicks him off his jeep while they're driving through the jungle. And, the, and his one buddy's like, "Who is that guy?" And James Raymar's like, "Someone I killed a long time ago." And apparently, he doesn't know how to stay dead. But it's revealed that <laughs> James Raymar actually killed uh, Kit Walker's father. Who was the Phantom, uh, not Kit hmm. Walker, who is now the new Phantom? But like the thing is, like you see his father as a ghost, because like this is a world that like believes in mysticism. Um, but his father's like seventy, so like if, if you go by the old adage, like you know, you appear as you die. That old dude was still a Phantom. <laughs> <laughs> like goddamn, fucking crazy. So, uh, the game, um, yeah, it's based off the cartoon, but it looks just like the Phantom. So that's pretty baller. Um, as far as graphics goes, I played on the SNES, you played on the Sega, so we're just gonna, you know, just fucking do it and, and fucking who cares. 
Um, it, it may not be the most accurate take that we've ever had, but like Matt once tried to really put over uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles arcade game. So like, you know, we haven't always had the. You're gonna hold that over to me the rest of my life. <laughs> I literally the first time I brought it up since it happened. <laughs> Uh, so, so we haven't always been the most, uh, uh, w- as the kids say, one hundy <laughs> when it comes to being uh, accurate. Uh, mm-hmm. I always subscribe to the idea that we're allowed to change our minds with time. So we're, we're going we're gonna to roll with this the best we can. Um, so keep in mind, I played on the SNES. He played on the Sega. Was this on like one of those like Sega Master System things that you bought? Like, like one of those installed uh, consoles? Or did you own um, this? No, I had. Um, no, no, no. I didn't own it. It was on. Um, I had it on a um, EverDrive thing. I was playing off of. Oh, okay. I'm surprised that they allowed a licensed property to be redistributed like that. Yeah, I, I guess. I guess anything can pass through, you know. Especially if it's something that not a lot of people invested in. I guess. Apparently not. So graphics for me, um, I really like the designs of the villains. Um, they do change up enough throughout the levels I think uh, are really fucking polished. Um, again, I'm, pl- I'm playing it off the SNES, so just kind of keep that in mind, folks. Uh, the backgrounds were really cool. The level variety was super well done. Um, my only real gripe has nothing to do with graphics, so I'm going to give this a solid five because I think it earned every bit of the design. Well, I, I, I'll still stick with a five, but the gun he uses is fucking dumb. <laughs> Yeah, it looks lame, does it? Just like yeah. the way he's holding it. Well, well, he's holding it very close to his hip, like a like a gunslinger. But the problem is, mm. is like they put like, and I guess this is why it's still a five. They put little graphics for like the the uh, the the explosion when he shoots it, but it makes mm. it just look like it's a pointy gun. <laughs> it's just weird. But it's is like really like well done and detailed and shit. So like, I'll still give it a five. I'm kind of there too. I mean, I, I I very much feel like they embrace the idea of what the cart the cartoon is with its visual design and like that. I gave it like made a lot of things pop. Got really creative with le- the level layouts and stuff like that. Bo- bosses and enemies both look really good in this game. There's the the gun thing is probably the only thing I got to hang up on too. Just how weird it kind of looks and animates itself. But other than that, this is solid, man. This is a five. All righty. Next up, the music and sound effects. They exist. <laughs> um, really weird. I don't. <laughs> sound effects were tolerable. Music for me was not complete. I'll give it a three overall. Uh, I think the music does set some great tones with, with the later boss battles. Hmm. So I'll, I'll, I'll at least give it a, th- a three. I'm kind of coming in at the average mark too because it, this the sound effects are like yeah whatever stock and the same same goes with the music honestly there's no there's no true standout here to me and especially with something that's trying to go off of a licensed property you want the the pop you want something that like makes you remember it and here it just doesn't it's not there. So yeah I'm. Probably right there, three. Um, I saw maybe two minutes of the show thinking that it was the game, mm. and I was like, mm, it, this isn't what I remember playing. <laughs> um, it, it, <laughs> the music's not much better for the animated property, so. So what are you giving it a three, you said? Yeah, three. Okay. Um, as far as gameplay goes, it's actually... This is one of those games that I feel like uh, uh, Stop Skeleton from fighting Uncle Derek. I think he, he should review because this game is ambitious. Mm-hmm. It's very big. It gives you a lot to do. You have a swing mechanic. Uh, you have uh, a great kind of um, platforming uh, section for a lot of levels. Uh, the fighting mechanic, the, the shooting mechanic, doesn't suck. Uh, especially for the fact that it was an SNES game, and you, you know you were only expected so much <laughs> with with properties like this. Um, right. It, it, I I I I had a fun time with it. 
my lone complaint would be I think that the jumping mechanic was a little bit iffy at times. Like, maybe iffy is the wrong word. I, I felt uneasy using it. Like, I wasn't Do you ever feel like sure. sometimes you, like, fall through platforms or something? Because I had that happen a couple of times. Not fall through platforms, no. That may have been a Sega issue. Um, okay. for, for me, it was just because, like, it's so tight with, with the jumping platform. Mm. Um, so I'll, I'll give gameplay a four. I, I, I enjoyed it. It was really ambitious. Uh, it was super fun. Um, but the jumping mechanic at times kind of made me feel a little bit queasy. So, four. Yeah, yeah, I could, I could see, I could see that. Um, I had, a, I had some fun with this too. Like I, the platforming is very solid. I do like, I do like the addition of the grapple mechanic. I think that's, in, I think that adds a little interesting um, technique to it. I actually used the grapple in in a boss fight. I don't know if you ever tried it. Um, there's um, a boss fight, and at least in the Genesis one, where there's this big mech coming at you, and you can. I grappled against the wall and hung from it and turned to the side and shot like Mega Man. Mm-hmm. I, I, I thought that was really cool, like, that you could actually, like, fucking do that and maintain where you were standing. Because a lot of games don't do that very well, or you'll glitch and fall. But he pulled it off, and that made it a lot of fun to experiment with things in boss fights and different, like, mechanics like that. So, yeah, I had a lot of fun with this. I would, like I said, I will only say my hang-up, at least my issue, was... There were some times where I would jump, and there's a clear destination I want to jump to, but for some reason, at least in the Genesis version, if you're not totally 100% sure on the jump, you're going to fall through a platform. It happened in a few stages to me, actually. But if you grapple, you're fine. It just didn't make sense. So you had to, like, um, really believe to land on there? I believe. Yeah. I believe. Clap if you believe. Well, the well, the way I'm the way I'll say it is like okay, like most of the time I, when I, I at I, least when I try to jump to a platform, you run to the platform, you know. I I know, I know what you mean. Um, the mm. the game also had another mechanic of allowing you to change gear, uh, and, mm. and like weapon types. So I thought that was pretty cool. Not a lot of games kind of did that, at least at this time. Besides like Mega Man yeah. be, being the obvious one, because like you called it uh, uh, kind of like a super. Metrovania clone, but yeah, Castlevania and Metroid weren't even doing this shit back then. <laughs> no, this is this this predates that, which is actually that's actually interesting. Like it, I kind of feel like I probably shouldn't have said Metroidvania. Maybe I should have been like more like Mega Man Metroid kind of Megavania. No, Maybe I, I, Metro kind of Mega. Well, Mega Metro Metro Man. Well, because the gameplay is similar to a Mega Man game, but it has the exploration of Metroid, so I feel like it falls into that category more. But no, I had a I had a real good time with this. I feel like the mechanics in this are all solid. I honestly am going to go higher. I'm going to go to five. I had a really good time with it. All right. Uh, fun factor five. I'm playing as the Phantom. Fuck you. <laughs> no bias whatsoever, people. No bias. Well, the fun factor is supposed to be the bias. It's literally, did you have fun playing this game? I did. Five. I had five funs. It's it, it, it's hard to not it's hard to not have fun with a game like this. Like, there's so there's so much to enjoy. You're you're doing there's so much action taking place, and you got a lot of things to do. So, yeah, you're gonna be entertained at every turn, man. So yeah, easy five, no question. Uh, and challenge. Uh, this is my one gripe. And it's going to keep it from being a five. I felt the boss fights, save for the final boss, were really fucking easy. Yeah, pretty much. Like they, they had, they had like layers to them, but they didn't. They weren't like hard. Like it was just like hit one spot and where whatever was happening, and you get through it. If you know? if you if you're a modern gamer and you're used to things happening fast, this game might be challenging because you, know, you might be impatient during some boss fights. But in mm. terms of just genuine kind of action or, 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 or doing what you need to do is, is, is not the hardest thing I've ever played. So I'll give it a three on the, on the challenge. Uh, it, it, well, I'll give it a four because challenge is about not so much just how hard or easy something is. It's about how worth something is to beat. The story for mm. this game is actually kind of interesting. 
And, and that was one of the big reasons why I kept going because they actually had cut scenes and, and stories and they treated each new level as a chapter. So like when you got your, your password, it's like, you know, write down this password so you can jump right back into uh, this chapter so you can keep playing the story. And I was like, ah, oh, that's fuck cool. I'll, g- I'll give it a four. Yeah, I would, I would say so, yeah. Challenge is, yeah, like I didn't, th- I think this game reward, it rewards you if you're patient. Mm-hmm. Like you really have to, you really have to feel things out when you're playing this. You can't rush into a fight and think you're just going to like contour your ass through it and shoot through the whole, shoot through the guy and be able to beat him. No, like there's specific things you have to do in specific spots you have to hit. That's just part of the game. Um, but yeah, I felt like it, it was a rewarding experience. I had like, I, I was really surprised by this. I thought, I thought so hard that based on a licensed property, this thing was just going to flat out suck. Like names, names, name is a relative thing. Like it doesn't mean it's going to be great, especially with this stuff. But I had a really good time with this. So yeah, four, no question. Super fighting robot, Mega Man, fight in to save the world. Twenty one and a half. For an 86 per Centauri. All right. Look at, look, look, look at the little phantom that could. Look, look, look at you. You bring somebody in who actually knew how to do music design, you would have gotten uh, into our Hall of Fame. Damn music. Yeah, music sucked. <laughs> yeah, that was not good. Damn. But anything above a 60, we, we deem playable. Anything above 70 is something that we recommend. Anything above an 80 is something we, we suggest you own. So go buy Phantom 2040. I did. If you, if you can, there probably wasn't many printed. <laughs> oh, I bet you there's more than you think. Although uh, it might yeah. be harder to find because they may have all just been thrown out. I mean, you never know. Like, like doing it, like doing it in advance to thinking you have a hot ticket on, like, item on your hands, but then you have so many left over because no one bought it. That kind of thing. I mean, basically. Although they didn't get a toy line, so maybe they weren't that high end on it. Mm-hmm. So, could, could be anything possible. Are you ready for the useless news? I am, sir. <laughs> Now it's time for your useless news. With your host, Sedru Cedric. And on traffic, Wit Kecker. Now it's time to take you to the front desk for your useless news. Thank you very much for the introduction. I am Sedru Cedric, and this is your useless news. Here are tonight's top stories. Sethu Sethric. Did I get it right? Fuck! I you were, cl- God you were damn close. It. It's just your name with a Z. I so fucked it up. I thought I was. Ah! Sethu Cedric. Damn it. Just replace the M and. The j- 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 just replace the M and the H with a Z. Come on, kid. I could just I could just said my name with a lift and it would have been fine. No, you still no Seth through z z z. It's it's like Mr. Venkman from uh, um, Are You for the Dark. It's, it's Venkman with a v v v. Speaking of v v v, that's the sound of heart palpitations going on around the world as gamers found out that Bethesda is gonna be doing a Fallout TV series. The heart palpitations came from the fact that they were doing with Amazon, and Amazon's super fucking corporate-y and greedy and disgusting and terrible. (laughs) So we already know where this is headed. Yeah, it's going to be bad. (laughs) Well, I don't want to say that. Because as gross and awful as Amazon is, they gave us the boys. And the boys is really fucking good. So... And to be fair, it's not exactly like Amazon Studios is going to be handling it. It's going to be Kidder Films, I think, is the one uh, uh, doing the production. Uh, Amazon Studios is going to be the one producing it. Uh, not producing it, but, but funding and distributing it. So um, I don't know what Kilcher Films is, 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 is used to doing, so let's, uh, 
That's uh. They did like uh, HBO HBO series Westworld. It said. Oh, that's not good. <laughs> that was a well. It wasn't a good series, I take it. Well, it, it, the first season was really well, well acclaimed, and then they just kind of said, uh, "No, <laughs> things, things have gone awry." <laughs> well, most video game shows don't, other than Castlevania, don't make it past the season anyway. So at least hope off for one good season. <laughs> uh, with Kilter Films, sorted by popular ascending. Let's see. Westworld, Persons of Interest, Reminiscence, The Percival, Westworld, 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 Westworld. Westworld. All right. Enough of the Westworld. Uh, It looks like their two biggest properties were Westworld and Persons of Interest. Hmm. That was like a CBS show, right? Yes. I'm thinking. Yes. Okay. The main character dies at the end. Spoilers. (laughs) I'm thinking of what? I wasn't going to watch it anyway. I don't care. <laughs> well, now you don't have to. Guess fuck it. Good. <laughs> so. You love spoiling things. I don't spoil anything, actually. After you just spoiled it. <laughs> I rarely spoil anything. And to be fair, that show ended like five years ago. Okay, fair enough. It's not like it's still going on. It's not. It's not like I said, like, uh. Uh, dude, Snape killed Dumbledore when the book came out. It's not like you're doing last week on Westworld, you know? Right? I haven't even watched Westworld. Mm. So I don't fucking know what happens. So, are you excited for a Bethesda pairing with Amazon? Are you excited for uh, a Fallout the show? I, I do have some moderate some modern interest in seeing what their approach could be to something like this because there are people I that I do talk to that have played this game like people in my family have actually played this game so I would feel like they would have some some interest in this but um, I don't know what the approach would be I feel like the approach would maybe be similar to possibly The Walking Dead in terms of how you would shoot this series maybe I don't know Uh, you're not far off the show. Mm-hmm. Here, here, here I, 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 I'm about to fucking duck. The games, All right. in terms of gameplay, are shitty. <laughs> oh, they are not. Good. Somebody behind you, look out! <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, like Fallout 3's like whole thing was like first person, and it's gonna be awesome, or third person, and it's gonna be choppy. And you can shoot people, but you're doing a percentage-based system. So, like, you don't actually know if you're going to shoot them in, or, or not because we're, we're going to do this thing, I guess. Because RPG stats are, are more valuable than just having a subwoner face. I don't, I don't fucking know. But the stories and the characters and, like, the, 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 uh, the like just the whole fucking universe that they built, this, this in-world aesthetic, like... Everything else brings you in. Like, the game could be the biggest slog ever, but I don't know anyone who's like, yeah. Uh, you know, I know a lot of people are like, you know, oof. Uh, uh, I love me some of that, uh, that, that uh, give me a game with good fucking gameplay. I don't fucking know. They're all terrible. <laughs> <laughs> what would I do? <laughs> uh, fucking, uh, what's that one with the, with the, the aliens and Half-Life? Half-Life, that's what it is. No, you know, I, I, I like that Half-Life gameplay, but uh, Fallout 3 is really where it's at. No one has ever said that. <laughs> ever. <laughs> Only mockingly, like I just did. Uh, but the thing with, with Fallout is, like, the story so immense, the world is so big, and you can explore so much, and there's so many hidden little things that make the, the story so much more interesting. And it's not just the exploration, it's the discoveries. So, like, I know there's, like, a lot of people when it comes to adaptations, it's like, well, why would I want to watch something when I can just play it? But for me, when I played Fallout, it was never about playing. It was about what would I find story-wise? What would I find content-wise? And, like, it's one of those games that you could honestly, like, if you just found someone who wasn't going to, you know, fuck around and just went and did all the things that you wanted him to go do so you can find out all these things you wanted to find out, I would do that instead. But usually that's not how people do things. 
So, like, I'm super excited about this fucking series because it could be really fucking interesting to see the world of Fallout be brought to you without having to deal with raiders or, you know, the Brotherhood of Steel or fucking feral ghouls or those fucking... six in any capacity. Right? Or those fucking uh, uh, night claws. Like, fucking hell. Because there's, like, uh, there's like a, a living computer that was, like, uh, built around a human being. So, like, there's, like, organs and shit that come out of it. There's a, a, an entire group. Uh, there's an entire s- society of, like, children warlords who, like, eat mm. one another. You know, there's a, a group of people who live in, like, a, a, a structure, like a, a big old penthouse that's built off the backs of uh, feral and non-feral ghouls, which are, like, the zombies of the universe. But ghouls have, like, sentience, so, like, they're still people. Except for the feral ones, that they're more like crazy zombie types. Uh, there's uh, a group of religious cells called the uh, the Brotherhood of Steel, who just wear giant mech armor and kill people. Uh, California is a wasteland of of civil war. Like, there's so many cool stories you can do here. So, like, yeah, I'll, I'll fucking excited. I'm so I feel like excited. I... <laughs> I just can't hide it. I'm about to lose control, and I think I like you. Well, this game it kind of li- it lives or this series is like at least now it lives or lives or dies based off of its lore, and especially after the debacle that what '76 was, it kind of needs a pick me up in some capacity, and this could be yes. a great way to, like you know, revive the series in a sense and tell some stories. And you don't have to worry about disappointing people in terms of, like, making a quality game. Now you can just focus on the lore that you were intending on them to discover in the first place. The lore is super in, uh, important for Fallout and Fallout fans. I can't speak to 76 because, like, why would I play that garbage game? Um, but Ugh. as far as the lore goes, like, if you have good lore in your games, like, you can survive shitty games. Oh, yeah. Unless you're Metal Gear Solid 5, in which case I don't know how that survives anything. Because that game is terrible. Oh, but you can do so much. You mean the same three missions a thousand times? Oh, to God, the variety. Oh, but look at the graphics. You mean the desert? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, those sand particles look fantastic. <laughs> oh, but look at the villains. Which one? As in singular. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but you got to face Skullface and the Sahal Anthropus, the easiest boss fight in the game. Oh, please tell me more. Oh, but you didn't like seeing Vulcan come back from the dead? You mean the dude we all thought was the dude was the dude? No, oh, oh, shocker. Man. Dude, five killed it for you, man. Jesus Christ. Oh, but you didn't like playing as, as uh, uh, what would, I don't even remember his fucking name. Crippled Snake or Dumb Snake or Stupid Snake. Stupid Face Snake. No, I didn't. You want to know why? Because you, you could get, keep fucking selling all you want. It's goddamn David Hater, motherfucker. No David Hater, no Solid Snake. I feel like yelling about Metal Gear Solid Five is just like therapy for you. <laughs> I mean, it might be. It's just your way to get over the one of the biggest disappointments for gaming for you, I think. I believe it's it's got to be up there with one of your biggest it's ones. It's literally the biggest disappointment. And it's like, well, if you're so mad, why don't you get mad at Konami? Because Konami didn't go over $80 million on the fucking budget. Konami's a publisher, mind you, too. And they didn't directly develop it either. Kojima! He's the motherfucker mm-hmm. I'm mad at. He tried to do like That's a thousand I... things and it sucked. Uh, <sighs> Matt, I don't play Metal Gear Solid for a base building fucking experience. I don't play Metal Gear Solid so I can do fucking Minecraft with a goddamn cart. I don't play Metal Gear Solid so I can pet the good boy dogs and oogle the barely clothed girls. Although I do like doing both. I play Metal Gear Solid because I want to see the fucking sweetest villains, which we had none. We had fucking nine-year-old Liquid Snake, who was a giant douchebag. We had eight-year-old fucking uh, uh, d- 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 Psycho Mantis, who was apparently a ginger. Go, go the fuck figure. You had Vulcan. So, like, three of your four villains, I, I already know. 
we've already met them in other games. And then the main villain was Skullface, and, and he was, like, a part of the, uh, the, the cool fucking uh, 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 build-up to it. I'm like, oh, yeah, fucking sweet-ass main villain. He's going to be fucking sweet. You see him twice. He's, he, you, you learn nothing about him. He, he's not cool. He's just the Red Skull with a gray face. Oh, cool, but he's not a Nazi. So, like, there's no fun in killing him. Because if he was a Nazi, at least you'd have that enjoyment of killing a Nazi. But, like, that's it. And didn't, like, you had, like, an eight chapters part two or some bullshit like that. And, like, you were supposed to get a part three. And I'm like, why didn't you just make a game? Just make a game like you made all the other ones. Fucking linear bullshit. Like, what the fuck? You made Middle Gear Solid 1 for, like, a toothpick and, like, a pack of used gum. Like, what are you doing? Why are you such an asshole these days, Kojima? Oh, looks like we lost Matt again because his fucking internet sucks. I'm just saying, man. The fucking Metal Gear Solid franchise died with five. And if anyone sits here and tries to go, you, you didn't understand. No, motherfucker, you don't understand it then. Uh, you can like whatever you like. I'm not going to sit here and disparage you. But if you come at me with the Metal Gear Solid 5 was a good game motif, <laughs> I ain't going to fly in this household. Sorry, in this dojo, that does not fly. That does not fly in this dojo. So, Matt's internet completely crapped out. So we're going to move on with Adam because why wouldn't we? Um, I should probably just scroll up a little bit. Uh, let's move on then to Discord. Apparently, Discord is getting uh, or distancing themselves away from the gaming revenue. It says social platform Discord has said it's moving away from its focus on gaming as part of an overdue rebranding effort. So there's that. Let's read the article because I have no idea what this is about. Originally designed as a virtual hangout for gamers, the platform has grown into something much wider in scope. Yeah, it's pretty much everyone's favorite place to go to for only fan accounts. According to Discord, it now attracts over 100 million active users who spend 4 billion minutes in conversation daily uh, communicating via text, image, video, and audio across 6.7 million active servers. Uh, Discord founder and CEO Jason Citrin said in a blog post on Tuesday that the platform was rebranding to reflect its increased, excuse me, increasingly broad audience and its diverse needs. In asking you what you want Discord to be, we heard you want Discord to be more welcoming, more inclusive, and more trustworthy, so more kinds of communities can have a home here. Many of you told us that the biggest misconception you hear about Discord is that it's only for gaming, but you feel Discord for literally everyone and for anyone who's like to talk. As you use Discord for more and more than playing games, our branding didn't keep up, and the way we talked about ourselves sent the wrong signal to the world making it harder for you to bring your broader community on Discord. In a bid to make the platform more accessible, inclusive, and user-friendly, Citron said Discord used to streamline the onboarding experience for new users, made it easier to create servers using fresh templates, fixed various bugs, made its in-app communications less game-centric. It also launched a new website with an updated tagline, Your Place to Talk. That's terrible. This is just the beginning of Discord's journey to a place of all your communities to talk about and build relationships. Many of you have already signed up for Nitro, which is an enhanced subscription service for Discord, which has taken off over the last couple of years, and our recent $100 million in additional funding will help accelerate our investment in the community, new features, and the company. Oh, I'm sure this is going to upset some butthurt fanboys somewhere. I can only imagine. I, for one, have found Discord to be nearly unusable. I, uh, I don't like the interface. I, I don't like the complete, complicated intro sequences that, 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 that one has to go through to try to get things going. I'm hoping that with this redesign, this rebranding, comes a little bit easier of a format to kind of navigate. Matt just texted me, Internet issues. Gee, you think... I'm responding with, what? No, I'm shocked. So, I guess we'll keep, uh, keep some stories open so I can get his opinion on this, but, but we're going to keep on rolling through here. 
Uh, with less than 200 concurrent players, Amazon is closing access to Crucible. Oh, no. I actually just saw a story about this on Inside Gaming Daily. Or is it just Inside Gaming? I didn't even hear about this game, truthfully. Is that a fucking minion? That looks like a goddamn fucking minion. Jeez, no wonder this game fucking failed. Uh, let's see. Starting at 9 a.m. Pacific time, 5 p.m. BST, which I think is British standard. That can't be right. New, well, yeah, I guess it is right. Uh, only players who've already downloaded uh, the free-to-play game on Steam will be able to continue to access it. The move shared on the game's official website follows a, a stagnant start for the free-to-play game, which at the time of publishing has less than 100 views on streaming platform Twitch, which the company owns. Guys, we have better streaming numbers than this game. That's funny. I dropped something. There it is. <laughs> I like playing with things while I talk. Not those things, you perverts. I got little Legion rings. I think I mentioned this before, actually. Well, I was talking to Marcus and Zach on one of our wrestling shows. So, according to... St- Steam Spy, Chris Bull had a peak concurrent player count of less than 200 on Tuesday, which is far less than expected for a free-to-play title backed by a major corporation. Again, I've never heard of this game. This branding sucks. According uh, Chris Bull's the Twitch owner's first big stride into game software is part of what is said to be an investment of hundreds of millions of dollars into the game creation. In a statement, Amazon Games said it would continue to follow the roadmap it laid out on a previous update and work on implementing a map, combat, and game system changes to the Hearts of the Hives mode. For the most part, your experience as a Crucible player will stay pretty much with uh, the same while we're in beta. One of the biggest changes you'll see is that we're going to schedule a dedicated time each week when we as devs will be playing the game with the community and soliciting feedback. The game will be accessible 24-7 so that you can continue to self-organize matches with other players. We recommend joining our Discord servers, (laughs) ironic, I define players to queue against. You'll still launch Crucible through Steam. You don't, need to even, uh, you don't even need a new download. You'll keep all the progress and customization items you've earned, and the Battle Press, Pass, Reward Tracks, and In-Game Store will continue to be supported. <clears throat> uh, Amazon retired two of Crucible's three game modes last week and laid its first season indefinitely. Usually games just get shuttered. <clears throat> And that's the thing that I find interesting about this is that they're not shuttering the game. They're just going to fucking rebuild it, apparently. I can't imagine that going well. It might be a situation that works. Um, You can't just try to be an Overwatch clone. That never really works for anyone, be it television shows, movies, what have you. Like, you actually need to bring something fresh to the table. Maybe it'll work out. Maybe it won't. You know, just speaking of television-wise, you know, at the same time the, the hit ABC show Lost was going on, everyone tried to find the next Lost. You think of a show like, uh, what's that fucking J.J. Abrams show on Fox? Uh, something. It's called something. I don't remember what it's called. But it was trying to be like Lost. It's like super fucking complicated and super you know, over the top and all that. <clears throat> but it didn't really, uh, Fringe, that's what it's called. But it really didn't catch on. Um, But then you look at CBS. They did Jericho. It only lasted a season and a half, two seasons total, like 30 episodes. But it was one of those shows that has a cult following to this day, unlike so many of the clones of the era. So maybe Crucible should just fucking completely rework everything they did. I don't know. But trying to be a clone of uh, uh, Overwatch is a a, a bad idea. Why the fuck you got to ruin everything? (laughs) <laughs> I don't know what it was. I was on, and then I immediately just got disconnected. I don't even know what's going on with my internet right now. Even your internet finds you boring. <laughs> so you were, you were, ta- you were, well, you were, what were you talking about then? The second story I had, the Crucible you, game? You're, you're being fucking boring, so boring that your internet cut you off. I like that story. I like that story a lot. <laughs> Uh, remember that time Matt was so boring his internet got tired 
<laughs> wanted to take a nap. It did take a nap, but what just wanted to is like, fuck it, I'm checking out later. <clears throat> well, we talked about Discord changing, and, and I don't know. Discord's just a shitty service overall, so I'm not really that surprised. I don't like it. But as far as the second story, yeah, we're talking Crucible, and it just it doesn't make any sense why they're even trying, because like the amount of money that they're going to need to sink into this to work is just unacceptable amount of losses. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It's just weird that it like it started out as a release and then reverted backwards. Mm-hmm. You know, I just thought that was what made it. I thought that's what made it a little strange. Like, you can already tell there's a massive problem occurring if you're going backwards. That just means that something went wrong in the development process. Something wrong with an idea. Maybe you got too ambitious. Who knows? But yeah, I the future does not look uh, look bright for them as a. I believe this is their first game they're releasing under their like developing thing, Am- like the Amazon Studio thing. So, Inside Gaming said that they'll eventually get it right because you know you, you throw enough money at the wall and eventually something will stick. And I- I'm sitting there going, no, because look at Google. Google mm-hmm. got one thing right, and it was it was uh, their fucking search engine. Then they bought YouTube. They've done nothing right since they invented Google.com. <laughs> so I have no <laughs> faith in Amazon getting their shit together. Especially <laughs> with video games. Like, if this game ends up eating $300 million or some ludicrous number, because let's be honest, it's probably going to hit that mark. Do you mm. really think Amazon's going to have that much faith in, in their abilities? Because I don't. No, no. It it's like Google with Stadium, man. That that thing was dead on arrival, and it, I feel like with this, they they're just gonna probably go down the go down the same road. They're not gonna be, you know, this wasn't something they were really ready for in terms of creating, you know, the properties they want. They could fund it all day long, but they don't think they really know the work that goes into making them worthwhile over time. Well, I'm sure they hired certified game designers, so I'm sure they do know. But the company mm-hmm. as a whole doesn't seem to have a clue. The other thing that I think will be interesting is to see, because there's a rumor going around that um, Amazon is getting ready to launch their own game streaming uh, service, like a la Twitch, which is ironic because they own Twitch. Hmm. So if they end up yeah, doing that, that sense. I don't know what what's going to happen to Twitch. <laughs> It, 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 2020 is going to be a weird fucking year. Yeah, because that, because that I mean, does that mean that they, they drop them? Because you really don't need, you don't really want to want two things associated with your, with your company as far as that goes, to, I, like, at least to manage them, because that'd be a fucking nightmare. Well, they bought Twitch, so like, I don't know. And mm. I'm not entirely sure if, if, if like Amazon is just focused on like creating like a streaming platform for, Games, or if they intend on doing another Twitch, I don't know. The, the rumor was super fucking vague, but I think it would be hilarious if Amazon decided to create a competitor for their own brand. Amazon to me feels like like, like an organization that wants everything to be their own, and Twitch will never be mm-hmm. seen as an Amazon property because they bought it. So like, I could easily see them launching like Amazon Stream or some bullshit like that. Fucking dumb. Their fucking game has a cat. Just fuck that game. <laughs> so an Cats open suck. an open world Harry Potter RPG is reporting on track for release in 2021. Hey, did you hear that uh, your lord and master J.K. Rowling uh, doesn't like the trans women? So fuck that. That game. is a that is a start. That is a story that's been circulating. That that's that was supposed to be a part of an announcement coming alongside like a new Batman game, I believe, that was going to be at E3, and also whatever Rocksteady's working on, which I'm, I was it said to be a Suicide Squad game. <laughs> Rocksteady's working on Bebop. Come on. All right, how have we never made a Bebop Dance Dance Revolution game? Just a fat warthog trying to dance like that'd be fucking. <laughs> Evo 2020 has been canceled outright following sexual abuse allegations against its president. I was about to have some fun with the story until I read it all the way through. <laughs> Uh-oh. Well, I just thought they were going to can- I-, I thought the headline was going to say Evo 2020 has been uh, canceled uh, outright following sexual abuse allegations. And I was going to be like, "What? Did the uh did did the uh the the the, the brand do something with like 
uh, Forever 17 or some bullshit? <laughs> like, what, what did Evo 2020 do? Were they in, like, Marie Claire's without permission? Like, I don't know. And then I read it all the way through, and I'm like, oh, okay, it's against a person. I can't make that joke. I still made it, but, but not in the way that I was going to. Uh, the world's biggest fighting game event has been canceled outright after companies and competitors pulled out following sexual abuse allegations against its current president. Evo 2020 was told due to... I was doing so well without you on the air. You come on, I can't fucking read for the life of me. Evo was due to hold an online-only tournament in 2020 due to the pandemic. However, on Thursday, it confirmed it had canceled the event outright to make Evo a better model for the stronger, safer culture we all seek. So wait, people had to be in their own homes with the people they trust in situations where they were protected and safe. And you had to improve on that. Uh, <laughs> like how much further do we go? Do we do we go south bunkers, park on this? And Matt, everybody gets bunkers, safe, spa- safe spaces. Bunkers. We're My going safe bunkers. Space. Don't make jokes. You're bad at them. <laughs> President Joey Kuehler? Kohler? How do we pronounce this, Matt? Co- Coolier? Oh, fuck. Let's Seller? Suyular? Joey C. Cute Joey C. Who is accused of historical sexual abuse? What does that mean? What is historical sexual? Did he finger bang a Thomas Jefferson statue? <laughs> what does that even mean? Oh my! Historical oh my sexual abuse? That what? In in regards to criminality, that's not a thing. Oh my God! What the fuck does that even mean? Uh, let's click on it and find out. Historical sexual abuse. Following allegations of misconduct by a community member. According to Evo, third-party investigation into the allegations will be conducted. We are aware of the allegations made against Joey Cooler. Uh, the behavior in these uh, accusations run directly counter to Evo's mission of building a safe working environment for all players and their attendees. The accusation surfaced on Twitter last night. Involving Kuehler and a 17-year-old as at the Southern Hills Golfland arcade back in 2001. In a twit-long post, Twitter user Pyron Arokari alleged that Kuehler enticed the miner to expose his penis by way of a bet. The post from Pylon Akari was released on Ju- Ju- July 1st. Evil statement followed three hours later. Uh, and he's being accused of sexual abuse. I think legally, I don't think that qualifies as sexual abuse. But yeah. I don't know what state this happened in, and each state has different qualifications for different criteria for different laws. Like Matt, in Washington, it is illegal to spit on someone. Hmm. That's, not, that's, not, that's not how it is in every state, though. So there are, are always varying degrees of, of legals. There's varying degrees of laws. There are varying degrees of... of uh, um, what they basically refer to as, the, as, 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 as a bar. Um, not, not a legal bar, but a, a, a bar of proof, a burden of proof, if you will. Where, mm. uh, and, and not to find someone guilty uh, in regards to what's the lowest threshold that would quantify this being a charge. If I push you, is that assault? That kind of idea. If I mm. punch you, that's assault. If I threaten to punch you... It, some states may say that's assault or, or, or a, uh, an act of uh, verbal harassment, which might be a felony in some states. It might be a misdemeanor in others. So the law is very all over the place in regards to what qu- qualifies and constitutes what. Just um, gray areas, man, all the time. Not gray areas, not at all, but sh- shifting and different ideologies for what constitutes a crime. And, and mm. you have to understand that Technically, while this is a country of 50 states, we are actually 50 independent uh, um, um, democracies that have formed a union. That's why the, the fucking, uh, uh, what was it, the, um, the more perfect union, the Declaration of Independence, right? I think that's, what, I think mm-hmm. that's the one I'm thinking of. Uh, it, you know, it's, it's a union. It's not a country. It, 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 not, not in the, the British or English, France, Japan idea. It's, it's 50 different states 
that have 50 different sets of laws. And one federal oversight. Like, this country is kind of weird when you think about it. Yeah, no but, shit. It makes it hard to keep up with anything. Yes. So, technically, this phrase is just wholly inaccurate. Uh, Andy Robinson, who is accused of historical sexual abuse. What it should be said is, is accused of, we'll say, sexual misconduct at the very least. Because technically speaking, in some states, depending on the age of Kohler, it may not even have been illegal. Except for the whole indecent exposure in public. Um, <clears throat> so it should have been a, 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 a historical allegation or an allegation or a past allegation of sexual misconduct. Because we don't know the details. And details are pretty fucking important. I, there's so many of these stories coming out anymore. It's just, it's, it's absolutely crazy. I mean, it's, this is like at least the third or the fourth one in the past like month that I've heard that's related to gaming. And it kind of, kind of disturbs me in a, in a sense, you know, like it makes me mm -hmm. worry, like who's the next, who's the next one around the corner is going to get accused of something, you know, cause he had the pro Jared thing last year. The Angry Joe accusations come out this year, and now every uh, Ubisoft is getting involved with this Evo. I mean, what the fuck is next, you know? Yeah. Um, on one hand, it's sad to see. On the other hand, it, it, it's one of those things where I don't want people who are going to prey on others to be in these realms. You know what I mean? Because I just mm -hmm. saw, like, I was reading the tweet that you sent me, or not sent me, but that you were talking to me about the other day about that streamer. Um, mm -hmm. I don't want people to go after s certain individuals because of vendettas, and I don't want, you know, because, like, the pro Jared thing, that dude looks like he's a creep. But after mm -hmm. going through, like, all the information, it really f seemed like the wife or the ex-wife was just being vindictive because mm -hmm. there wasn't really any evidence to support her claims other than he was probably a dick. Um, yeah, but that doesn't make any make him bad. It just makes him an Oh no, an it makes him it makes him a, a dick and and dicks aren't good, you know. Dicks and pussies for a reason are are insults. But it's not enough to lose your career over I, I I'd say. Again, I'm just going off of what was said. I don't know the situation firsthand, so I can't speak on it. Um, mm -hmm. but like I don't want this to be a thing where there's witch hunt hunts, but I also don't want there to be a, a thing where people are afraid to say, like, yeah, this, this individual was super fucking creepy. So when I look at these stories, I, I, I jest because that's kind of what we do, but I don't want to make it seem like I don't think that these aren't serious allegations. I've always been of the mindset that, you know, I don't believe all victims. I, I, I say investigate all claims. Um, if this is the only, like, because it's like, this is some pretty obscure shit. At a golf course, 19 years ago, this dude made a bet to see your dick. Not exactly a casting so, couch situation, but I'm willing to, to give you the benefit of the doubt. But here's the thing. Mm -hmm. Predators don't just prey on one person. No. So if there's more, then it makes sense. You know, then, then I believe it. If there's not, then I have some serious trepidations because people don't just abuse individuals once in their life. They just don't. Right. It's an it's an addict. Once you once you do something like that, most people who do that, at least from stories I've seen, they're addicts to it. They can't stop them. So it's not so much an an addiction, but I do understand the the idea that you're going with. For a lot of people, it's it's a it's a, a learned or accepted behavior within their own life. Uh, there's mm -hmm. a reason why most people say that those who abuse are likely to create the next generation of abusers because to them, that's normal. Um, then you also have to worry about the psychosis element of abusers as well. A lot of them are unwell or have anger issues or have seriously slanted perceptions either with regards to gender or race or sexuality to the point where they're unhinged. So... There's a very real possibility that this dude's a super fucking perv. But I think, and looking at the pro Jared thing, I think that was a dude who was always told he was ugly his entire life, finally finding people mm. who were super into him and mm. him not knowing how to handle it. It's very possible. That's how that one reads to me. This one, I don't know. Because here's the thing. In 2001, 
that was very much accepted guy kind of behavior, as, as disappointing as that may be to hear. Um, there were many a times when I was playing football where it was completely uh, accepted by the coaching staff to haze freshmen with violent tendencies. Uh, I got into a fist fight by fucking freshman year. I'm all a five foot nothing. Uh, Cause some dude tried to use a paddle on me. I'm like, this ain't going to happen. What are you doing? And the coach yelled at me. Cause I was the one starting a fist fight. Cause I didn't want to get spanked with a fucking battle. I was like, Oh, okay. I see this is fucked up. So you, you kind of yeah. have to realize that there are, you know, 20 years ago was a big, big fucking culture difference. That's not to say that what this dude was, did was all right. Cause if, if he said it, if he did it, no. And it, and if he was like significantly older, that's weird. But if he's like 18 and the kid's 17, there are Romeo and Juliet laws for a reason. So, mm-hmm. you know, he wouldn't even be in trouble again, except for the whole indecent exposure thing. But I don't know exactly like what the depths of this is because I, you know, th- there's only a, like a statement, I guess, or like a, an accusation that didn't go into too much depth. You know, how old was the individual at, at, at the hand? I, I don't know that question or that answer. You know, uh, how much older was the guy who was doing it? I don't know that question or that answer either. You know, uh, uh, it, was this something that they were both into? Was it something that neither were into? Like, I don't know. Like, there's too many questions that I have that I don't know the answers to. And so much can happen between that time and now. I mean, who's to say that he hasn't done other things in between that time that they just haven't found yet or mm-hmm. somebody hasn't come forward with yet. So this could be a telling sign of a, something they've been ignoring for the longest time, or it could be somebody mixing up a person with another person. You really don't know. And that's the thing is mis- the, the lack of information kills things like this. You have to have the info before you do make any accusation. So while Cooler c- Color something said, uh, C, you just call them C. <laughs> yeah, C. Um, <clears throat> he he tweeted out twice. Um, I'm sorry. I never meant to hurt anyone. I was young and reckless and did things I'm not proud of. But I've been growing and maturing over the past 20 years. But that doesn't excuse anything. All I have to, all I've been trying to do is become a better person. Once again, I'm truly sorry. If you are going to post fake DMs, at least do some research. My Twitter username wasn't even Mr. Wiz from 2010 to 2016. Obviously, a smear campaign, always going to be guilty before innocent on social media. That last sentence is very true. Uh, Crack Prawn, someone named Chango tweeted out, Crack Prawn is a deviant sex pest and victimized Mr. Wiz. Uh, I don't know. I feel like this is like a, a fucking rabbit hole we're all about to go down can we get an oh, age on joey man. cooler keller sulier didn't did it i was gonna say didn't it say it in the article or nope uh, it said 20 years ago yeah. why well, how, how old is he today uh, i am not seeing an age for this dude You know, I keep seeing it's just canceled, canceled. Um, How old is? Let's 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 Google that. Uh, that's not that. Ah, oh, jeez, I don't even know what this dude looks like. Well, I can tell you not a 52-year-old rocker. Uh, if this is Joey Cooler, he probably looks to be in his late 40s, early 50s. So um, I would say 20s, late 20s, early 30s then. So, yeah, not good. Not good at all, kid. Um, he doesn't deny the allegations. So I guess these allegations have a lot of merit. Kind of goes yeah. to, to, to uh, show you what kind of creeps are in games. But then again, like who was that? Who was that chick that we were that you were fucking looking into or talking about? Were you talking about the one that was doing the uh, digging into the Angry Joe situation? Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm talking about the one that uh, you were doing uh, talking to about on the other day. We were fucking uh, texting. Oh. oh, when I was on when I was on Twitter. Okay. Um. 
there was this th- th- this was a very this was on a whole other level of a seri- a serious accusation um i was talking um there was something that got posted on twitter it had to do with a smash brothers um like Cinepi. A person who played in a smash brothers Cinepi. that's it yeah so and, um Wait, go ahead. Well, I'll just jump in on this because uh, I, I did a little little reading into this. So apparently uh, this dude's Sin, uh, is Sinpai the, the kid or is Sinpai the girl? Sinpai is the girl. Okay. So this girl named Sinpai apparently was accused of, of hooking up with a 13-year-old boy at, at Smash Brother tournaments back like five, six years ago. And I looked at I looked at the uh, the accusation. And I looked at, at the screenshots that, that they posted. I'm kind of just like, all right, she's like 20. He's like 13. Why are you grabbing him? Why are you touching him? That's weird. Like if if she was like the sister, okay, or even like a babysitter, like, like maybe maybe you're like still babysitting the kid after like ten years. Okay, I can I understand having, you know, an attachment physically. But mm-hmm. like, that was weird, man. Like like watching her at, and act with him. Like if I was his dad, I'd be like, no, you're not allowed to hang out with her anymore. She's she's being creepy. But apparently, uh, some dudes come to her defense saying that it's not a. Uh, it's not this kid. It's not her fault. The, the kid was always harassing her and being super racist. And I'm like, all right, man. Let's really come on. So I don't know. Yeah, this this was the thing that when I was talking to some, um, I, I saw a post on this. Somebody I was following on Twitter. I was I saw this post of it, and they they say like, oh, I can see the evidence. It's so clear. It's disgusting and. And the only thing I saw in the video is her putting her arm around him. So I'm like, okay, that could mean anything, babysit or anything like you're saying. And then I saw them kind of walk further off into the back of a room. And then I see movement, but I don't like, you don't see an action taking place because that it's so far away. You don't know what's so, happening. So the, f- the, the string does not show anything illegal. Mm-hmm. To be clear, it doesn't. But okay. attached to the accusation, it looks very damning. That's like you holding a gun outside of a bank, and I tell you, uh, or, or, or someone tells someone, oh, yeah, the bank just got robbed about 10 minutes before that guy with that gun outside of the bank went inside. Well, okay, maybe he didn't rob it, but like, it seems like a pretty good place to start with the investigation. Yeah, yeah like, like, like I'm saying, though, I didn't say that like she's not guilty of anything, because if she very well might be. Well, here, I'm here's just saying the, the, mm-hmm. the Super Smash Brothers commentator has accused for sexually abusing a 14 year old. She's a commentator. <laughs> Are we really those people who are commentating st- on video I, games? I thought she was a streamer. I thought that's what I, that's what she was I being I'm referred just reading, to as. I'm, I was I'm just reading the fucking article, man. Uh, as okay. a, as uh, the Super Smash Brothers uh, commentator has accusations for like, is there more to this? Did I skip something? Because this sounds so fucking terribly written. Arrest Cin- Cinnamon Dunson trends on Twitter. Super Smash Brothers commentator Cinnamon Sinpai Dunson accused of sexually abusing f- with f- sexual abuse with 14 year old. Okay, yeah. Uh, Amit Shah- Shahram, that's terribly written. Because it, it, here's how it reads Super Smash Brothers com- uh, commentator Cinnamon Sinpai Dunson accused of sexual abuse with 14 year old. That implies that a 14 year old and her were sexually abusing someone. Jesus Christ, who's your editor? Listen, I fuck up sometimes when I write, right? Like, it happens. Mm-hmm. But that's got to right. be like, you, you got to reread that sentence, man. Come on. So she's accused of abusing a 14-year-old player named Troy. I hate internet gamers. Papa, Poopa, Wells. Oh, God. I don't want anyone to be sexually abused. But if you told me this kid was slapped for his screen name, I'd be fine with it. That's a different. That's a that's a different abuse at a different level. Well, like if another fourteen year old slapped the shit out of him for having a dumb name, I wouldn't even blink twice. I'd be like, "Yeah, kid, you probably had that one coming." 
Uh, this uh, after Wells shared the incident on Twitter with a tweet. Uh, this made his fans worry about it. Really? Do you worry about it now? No, it's not even that. It's like, and this made his fans worry about it. Worry about what? What's the it? Worry about him? Worry about the, the streamer? Worrying about tw- the tweet? Worry about the exit? Like what? <laughs> what is? What are they worried about? Specify oh my information God. facts. Let's go. <laughs> if someone tells me this is his first news article, I'll be I'll I'll withdraw all criticism because you got to learn. But man, if he's like a pro, I'm just gonna be like this fucking terrible. <laughs> Like, if you read his description, it's like, he's been with the site for, like, four years. Oh, fuck off. He's founded the site. Well, that explains why he hasn't been fired yet. And they resulted, uh, <laughs> that's on me, and uh, this made his fans worry about it, and they, in results, is English not his first language? Because, like, I'll give him a pass. I will. Like, English ain't easy. God. And it they, in results, like started. Like, <sighs> here's, how, here's how you do this. Here's how you do this. Um, a tweet comes out. His fans were worried about the accusations and in turn or due to started a petition on Twitter with a hashtag uh, of arrest Cinnamon Dunson. But the way he writes it is just so bad. And they, in result, started the online microblogging site protest by trending the hashtag for the arrest of Cinnamon Dunson. Who wrote? Who edited this? Oh my God! You're making me go macho mean on you. Clearly, uh, it wasn't you. <laughs> no, it was not, because I would not stand. For this. Like, I, listen, there might be once in a while where I get a colloquialism wrong, or if like my T doesn't land and it makes it seem like, I, like I'm just fucking hurrying through it. But like, goddamn, goddamn, goddamn. Like take, like take a class, man. Come on. He said she initiated Jesus. sexual conversations and then the sexual relationship. Oh, I hate that sentence so much. I can't even tell you how much I hate that sentence. At that time, Dunson came drunk, forcefully take him to the ground. I didn't even fuck that up. That's how it was written. Dunson came drunk, forcefully oh. take him to the ground. I'm sorry, there was no thought. It's just take to ground. And started making oh out while laying on top of him. Oh, this is the worst. This is the worst. Did a 14 year old write this? <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. A drunk 14 year old. Don't drink. Alcohol is bad. I'm serious. That's not a joke. This happened with him for about 15 to 20 seconds. And then after he just went back and kept playing, I was pretty much. Uh, it's just pretty much the entire time it was happening. I wasn't really opposed to it, though, since I was 14 at the time and I liked her a lot. This whole situation has shocked him a lot. At that young age, later, Cinnamon Dunson pushed the limits, began sleeping on the same bed together. I'm so trying not to scream in anger at the way this is written. He also revealed that the extent of sexual relationship never reached intercourse and was only limited to oral activity. Or what? What? What the ever? Oh, my God, Christ. <laughs> You can, you can you can drop the nuke anytime you want. Oral activity. Oh my god. I know who wrote this. Man, I know who wrote this. Bill Clinton wrote this. <laughs> oh my god, this came from gaming in the Clinton years. Oh shit. Oh god, at least that would be highly entertaining. <clears throat> he also unveiled that she is not just limited to this. She abused him emotionally as well. She would constantly gaslight me and make me question myself at the time while I was only fourteen and still trying to find myself as a person. He explained this. Can I ask on a, a question? Twirling. I didn't mean to interrupt you, but can I ask you a question? Yes. I'm not familiar with the term gaslight. What does that mean? <laughs> Go back and listen to any one of our shows. I gaslight your ass all the time. <laughs> does that make fun of, ridicule? Is that um, what I mean? No, to, to be sincere, it's like if I were to say, um, Matt, you're... Oh, God, I really do gaslight you all the time. <laughs> if, if I were to say, like, Matt, you're too fat, you'll never find someone to love you. Except for me. That's gaslighting. Like, cause I, I'm, it's, it's a hardcore insult, but it's designed oh. to like manipulate you. Uh, another way, like, uh, uh, here, this is the, the more common expression. Like if someone's okay. like, you know, what you said to me really upset me. Like, so if you were to say that to me and I respond with, well, you're just being too sensitive because I didn't say anything that mean, that's gaslighting. You're, you're basically dismissing someone. 
with uh, a kind of a dismissive gesture or a rude insult or something to that effect. Okay. So, like, if someone calls you dumb or, or insinuates that you're dumb and then, like, gives you, like, a backhanded compliment or if you get upset because someone does something that you find to be, uh, you know, against your moral, you know, imperatives and, and, and you go, hey, I didn't like that. And they're like, well, what's the big deal? It's not that, it, you know, you just get over it, wussy. That's gaslighting, essentially. Uh, okay, that that last one put it in, for, in a perspective. I got you. So... Yeah, it's 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 yeah. one of those things. Um, to hang on. The truth is, is, I didn't even read this as a news story. I just found like the original Twitter post from the kid who it happened to. Yeah, that, I, I I I I ventured in further. Mm. Why is Google not working? Oh, there we go. Delete ass, delete bitch. Um, I'm looking for for something specific. Cause, cause I, I hate when when people say this. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Benjamin, Benjamin. I, I. I'm canceling this fucking show. <laughs> well, the, Jesus Christ, come on, like, you, the you gaming forgot world your just, name so you have to write it twice. The gaming world just pisses me off so much. Benjamin I Benjamin is, is a smart man, or at least that's what he's going to lead you to believe. Arrest Cinnamon Dunson. She's a pedophile who sexually abused a 14-year-old boy and make him attempt suicide. Oh, that's even worse than the article. Make him attempt what? First and foremost, you can't make anyone attempt suicide. That that's homicide. Yeah. You fucking repugnant douchebag. Secondly, it's made him with a D. Because she's not actively currently in the process of trying to do anything. It's a past tense accusation. You cunt licker. Oh, okay. I just think. Hang on. People have a, who have no sense of writing should just not be on Twitter at all. I, I don't think Twitter should exist, period. So, like, yeah. Firstly, she's not a pedophile. If she's attracted to a 14-year-old boy, she's not a pedophile. She's a hebophile. A hebophile. He, a hebophile. Sorry. A, a hebophile I is someone who is... Who's, yeah, well, yes. See, and that's the thing. People shouldn't fucking use words they don't know the definition of. A, a, mm. I, I don't know if I'm pronouncing this right because I've never actually heard it used in context of a word. But a, hebo- a, a hebophiliac or a hebophile is someone who's attracted to, the, to children of the ages of 11 to 14. Huh. Yes. And anyone who's attracted to someone of the ages 15 to 19 is an epiphile. So if you're into a college freshman, you are an epiphiliac. These are not terms so pedo- generally used as, as legal terms. These are just... Uh, uh, um, um, What's the word? Um, uh, a preference. So it's kind of levels to this then, way you're describing? Oh. Like pedophile would be first then or something then, I'm guessing? Pedophile is the worst. And, and, and that's why I am so dead set against people using it when we're talking about 15 and 16-year-olds. Mm-hmm. Keep dropping that fucking ring. Where did it go this time? Come back here, you little cunt. I play with things in my hand while we talk. I'm, I, I have to multitask. Otherwise, I feel like I'm going insane. There it is. That's why I always watch well, all keep... the shows that I need to watch, like our, our other podcasts while I'm playing video games or doing work. Because if I'm not multitasking, I'm not truly using my brain. I have three Legion rings from like the Legion of Superheroes, and then I got a, a green kryptonite ring I got from an old Superman action figure way back in the day. And I'm just kind of jangling them in my hand. Yeah. But sometimes one of the Legion rings jumps out because it's a cunt. So anyway, um, yes, there are technically um, tiers to this. And, and, and I think it's called like the... Um, there, there's like a Tanner scale, I think is what it's called. Uh, I'll read the, the okay. Wikipedia page right here. Uh, in research environments, specific terms are used for... Chronophilias, for instance, and epophilia is to refer to someone uh, who is referred to the sexual preference from mid to late adolescence. 
Uh, hypophilia is to refer to the per, uh, sexual preference for earlier pre-pu- uh, prepubescent individuals, and epidophilia is to rever- uh, refer to the primary or exclusive sexual interest of prepubescent children. The reason why I am so gung-ho about making sure people use the appropriate term is to specify the severity of the term pedophilia. Being sexually interested in someone who is of legal age to consent and produce offspring is not pedophilia. If you're into a 17-year-old and you're 20 and you're in the state of Ohio, that's legal across the board. You could be 42 and 17 and it's legal in Ohio. But it's not, a, it's not legal at all in any state, in any country, in any thought of frame of mind to be interested in an eight-year-old or a six-year-old. The term pedophile should not be thrown around willy-nilly. And I think it's because so many people don't understand that not only the accusations or, or the laws that come with this, but the severity of the actual crimes that these words carry. It's like when someone says, oh, so-and-so murdered someone. Well, what happened? Well, they were driving their car and they hit a patch of black ice and hit someone. They murdered him? Yeah, because, but they were drunk. Now, listen, I'm no proponent of drunk driving. I'm not even a proponent of alcohol. I, I, I would be very okay if we banned all alcohol. But that's not murder. That's, you know, depending uh, uh, you know, on the severity of the alcohol level and, and, and what they were doing prior to the accident, at, at worst, you're looking at negligent homicide, which is not a murder charge. Murder implies consent. Uh, content, not consent. Like, if I showed up to your house, gave you a high five, and you fell down the steps... Okay, maybe it was my fault, but I didn't murder you. I did kill you. <laughs> I did yeah, kill you. Hell of a high five, damn. <laughs> right? I've been working out lately, so maybe I got that old power back. But I would be wow. <laughs> right. <laughs> fucking Batman. Wham! Bam! Mm, damn! Dead. Um, that would you know be probably um, negligent homicide at best, if anything. Mm. But if I went there and pushed you down the stairs because I was trying to kill you, and I wrote like a, 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 a post on my Tumblr about, oh, I'm going to kill Matt tonight. Well, that's murder. Because <laughs> you have to have prior intent to, to cause someone's life to end. That, that's the definition of murder. People don't know these terms, and it pisses me off. Yeah, they need to, the, well, categories and things need to be put into categories for a reason. You yes. need to have them so you can identify exactly what they are when they occur. Now, to be clear, a hepophiliac is still someone who's doing something illegal. Oh, yeah. So that she doesn't, still, make it, doesn't make the situation better. If these accusations are against her are true, I 100% believe that she should go to jail. because Just because you're, you're a hepophiliac and not a pedophile, or a hepophile mm-hmm. and not a pedophile, it doesn't does mean you're on the right side of this. <laughs> I'm arguing about which Mm-mm. hole to throw you in, not about keeping you out of the hole. <laughs> to be clear, <laughs> I'm we just, a, we just gotta make sure it's the right one. I'm a stickler for organizations. You should see me when it, co- it comes time to recycle. <laughs> oh God, this one's for paper. This one's for aluminum. This one's for glass. <laughs> the, this one is a fucking uh, blue plastic bag from the grocery store. So that means it goes to the grocery store to get recycled. <laughs> Because <laughs> you're that specific. Fuck. I am that fu- I was just there two days ago. Oh, man. <laughs> I had like five bags full of plastic bags from the grocery store. So I was like, I got to take these to the fucking grocery store to recycle because I, I want to make sure that I'm recycling. Yeah. Doing good for that environment, man. Keep that shit up. I'm not even like a big environmentalist, but like I do recycle all the time and I want to live in a tiny house where I can have solar panels. It's so like, you know. So when it comes to this story, uh, specifically with uh, the Super Smash Bros. commentator, Sinapai and Sinpai or whatever her name is, it's going to be one of those things where um, if this is true, I, I, and, and I hate that this is becoming a trend, where they're like, well, I don't want anyone to investigate. I just, I need to make my story known. No. Because, as I said at the top of the show, if you're a predator, you're not the only one they're doing this to. I understand that victims have a right to to do as they need to to find peace. But if you're going to speak the name of your abuser, you better be filing charges. Not not in some grotesque kind of, well, or else it didn't happen kind of mentality. But it's your obligation as a human being to worry about someone. We are pack animals. If I knew someone was doing something atrocious, I would be like, listen, yo, Mr. Officer, 
You needs to go check this human being out because they're doing the stupid. I wouldn't just be like, well, yeah, he's doing the stupid, but I don't want, you know, I don't want to bring the police into this. Why not? You want him to keep doing it? Because there's going to be people who don't think that that happened. So they're not going to be like, you know, hearing your warnings like, oh, don't hang out with Simpai. She'll molest you if you're 14. There are going to be people who are like, ah, I don't believe it. And even if I did believe it, like she's hot. Yeah, that's fine. Because they don't know any better. So, like, you, you, this puppet, puppet, whatever his fucking dumbass name is, this, this kid needs to fucking file charges if this is true. Because oh, yeah. if she performed oral sex on him, that's rape. Yeah, well, because in, at that age, states, that age is right. not consent, man. You, right. You, you, you are not illegally allowed to give consent at that age. I don't know if it's technically rape. Some states, that is rape. But in Ohio, I think it's sexual abuse of a minor. Mm. Which will carry a different charge, but still illegal as fuck. It's a felony. Like, she'll serve mm-hmm. time and be put on one of those registries. Like, they don't just d- say it to area agreements. And if you really believe in it, get her in jail. Yeah. Do it. I, I, you have a civic duty to stand up for not just yourself, but for those that may have been harmed. And listen, you may not win. I'm not asking you mm-hmm. to win. I'm just asking you to just try. Just try. Exactly. But I'm also like, not gonna. I'm not. I'm also not gonna sit here and send this kid like constant streams of threats. Like, oh well, if you're serious, why don't you just go to the cops? But no, because me saying that this is my opinion that if you're gonna speak the name of an abuser, that you should go to the police and make sure that they don't do this to anyone else. That's just my opinion, man. Mm-hmm. I, I don't. I don't subscribe to the notion that I'm always right. I mean, I am, <laughs> but I'll subscribe to that notion. So like, well, you who's know. to say that this person isn't afraid of it too? You know what I mean? Yeah. Who isn't like this? Doesn't already done significant damage to them mentally as a person? Maybe they're yeah. they're afraid of the consequences that'll come from it, man. You don't really know a per what a person's actions yeah. are gonna resort to. And, and you don't know like, and and here's the thing, like you know, the the bigger the target, the more backlash there's gonna be. Exactly. So like, this chick's gonna get like a lot of sympathy from female gamers. From uh, uh, the dude that I saw defending her was saying, like, uh, this puppet kid was only, like, ever harassing her because she's black or mixed race. I don't know what she is. Um, she's, she's not white. I know that. Um, but, like, you know, he was trying to imply that it was, like, uh, that this puppet kid was going after her because it was racially motivated. So there's going to be people who will defend her over, over that idea. So, like, there's, mm-hmm. you know, a contingent of individuals out there who will defend her. And I've gone after names before with my writing. It is not easy in today's day and age to bear the brunt of a swarm of fans who think they're, they're repping their idol. Right. So I get, you know, I, I get it. But, like, man, you, you got to break that trend. Like, if this chick really did these things to you, she's done them to other people. And you need to up your game and go, all right, I'm going to fucking take that big boy Mario mushroom and fucking handle this shit. Because yeah, just, don't, just, don't let, just a, don't let a person's popularity intimidate you, man. Don't yeah. let it happen. I, just speaking the name isn't enough because there's always going to be people go, well, yeah, but where's the proof? Fucking go get proof, man. I'm just, I'm an advocate for truth and justice. Like, that's just me. Like, that's all I'm about. If someone's doing something bad, I want them to be held responsible. Especially with something as serious as this, you don't no. want to fuck around with no, it. Oh, not at all. Uh, guess we're going back to $70 games. More publishers reporting, uh, reportedly considering $70 next gen game pricing. That's, mm. how, I mean, fucking Super Nintendo, a uh, fucking game for $60, $70, $80. Like, I, I'm not surprised. Yeah, I remember, I still remember them back in the day. Like, what, weren't Super Nintendo games originally retailing for like 70 bucks, some of them, because of what they offered? I remember Legend of Zelda at one point being offered in a magazine. I only remember this because I fucking found it like a, a year ago for seventy nine ninety nine at one point. I remember Mario RPG being like seventy at one point too. Yeah, so like I'm not surprised. And honestly, even though I'm the biggest cheapskate in the history of cheapskate dumb, I I'm in the Hall of Fame. I'll show you next time. I'm okay with this, considering how much these games are are, are being you know fed into financially. Eventually, mm-hmm. the price was going to have to go up. Oh, yeah. I mean, if the council's going to be $500, $600, like, what did you expect, people? And, and what did I tell you when, when I got you into comics? Comics is a lot less expensive of a hobby. 
Yeah. Yeah, the thing is, the thing is with games, though. I mean, for the pe- person who's always seeking the big AAA thing, this is poses a big problem. But if you're somebody who's maybe got a kind of a mixture of things going on, or maybe is only looking for the smaller experiences, don't really care about all the big stuff all the time, this might not totally hundred percent matter to you. But it's still a thing you need to be aware of. So. And I don't foresee myself spending that kind of. I don't see, see myself spending that kind of money on most games unless I'm really interested in them. So, but I I knew the trend was coming. How could it not be? I'm not even against it. You know, truthfully. Now, if they get now, if this is a precursor, because I, I I know it won't happen, but if this is a way to kind of nip in the bud all of these little extra purchases so that we can just have straight up games nowadays i i would be fully behind this but i think that's just not what the case is here it's just no. costing a lot to develop that's no, all it is the idea of video games have kind of changed into being in uh, a, a singular experience to being a more re- reusable recyclable kind of profit window. like an investment no, more like a, like like a long term idea, like a um, what is the fucking term? Like they're uh, uh, fucking Warner Brothers or whoever owns uh, Warner Media now is a, a lifestyle brand. That's what it is. Uh, a lot of game developers are looking at video games as lifestyle brands now, so they look at long term investments into franchises that will uh, have a long term kind of viewpoints financially, <clears throat> like with Animal Crossing. The people who play Animal Crossing aren't just playing Animal Crossing. They're talking about how this game reflects their personality and how they can put their personality into the game. So the game is kind of a mere representation of the fan base. And the reason why that works so much and why it's been so popular for all these years is because they kind of treat it as a lifestyle brand. Do what you want in this game for however long you want it, and that's your definition of the game. But also think about, like, uh, Overwatch. Overwatch is very much a lifestyle brand. You know, it caters to specific people with specific interests and specific, uh, specific uh, ideologies and, and leanings, both politically and socially, because it's a lifestyle brand. So you're going to see more and more games kind of go into that route where they can go deeper and longer into uh, the, s- the shelf life of a game because it can, like Grand Theft Auto. So I'm not at all surprised with the way this game, the, the market's going, and I've said it's been going in this direction for however long we've been doing this show. Um, but, yeah, mm-hmm. it's kind of one of those things where I'm not at all surprised about this, and you know, here we are, and I'm not at all surprised. So um, It's kind of, it's kind of and I mean, it, it may, maybe it's not so surprising that it came from 2K first. Like, you would think they would just reveal the prices of games in general, but 2K jumped the gun and, like, standard edition on these ones, 70 bucks. No, don't surprise me in the least, especially those companies. They'll jump the gun on any attempts to make more money. Oh, God, yes. Especially 2K. Fuck 2K. Mm. I mean, I'll be buying their game, don't, don't get me wrong, because I'm a basketball mm. fiend. But, like, yeah, fuck 2K. Mm. <laughs> 2K, especially Matt. Especially over WWE, fuck that. When 2K came out for the Sega Dreamcast, I was so in love with that franchise. Oh, my God, it was so cool. I remember playing as the Miami Heat when they had, like, Alonzo Mourning. And I was like, yeah, this is the coolest fucking shit ever. Oh, look at me dunking. Ah, I'm dunking in real graphics. Like, what? Ah, it's so cool. And, like, listen, I still kind of feel that way about the franchise. It's better than NBA Live, but that's also like saying, like, any game is better than Madden. Because let's be honest, any game is better than Madden. So apparently we're getting a Bloodstained 2 Curse of the Moon. Uh, Yeah. It's going to be a side-scroller 2D... Retro themed. It's going to carry on from the story of the first Bloodstain. Was Bloodstain the 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 precursor game, or was that the? It was the, the precursor. It, it was the precursor to Bloodstain. Curse of the Moon was the precursor to Ritual of the Night. It was okay. like the little extra game they made for it. Well, R- Ritual of the Night was not good. It was fine. Bloodstain was awesome. <laughs> Bloodstain was fucking great. I like me some Bloodstain. <laughs> So I'm, like, super hyped for this. Uh, apparently they're introducing uh, one or two new characters, plus the original characters from the first game will be available as well. The sequel was introduced by producer Koji Igarashi during the New Game Expo. 
Curse of the Moon 2 will arrive the multi scenario structure of the 2018 title with a new story supervised by I- I- Igarashi. Players take control of Zhang Su, a swordsman from the far east who bears a deep grudge against demon kind and the alchemists who summon them. Ooh, sexy. Zheng Shu must find his way, uh, must, must battle his way through the demonic stronghold, but he doesn't have to do it alone. You'll have my axe and my bow and my whip. Who, invent, who invited the dominatrix? Like, come on. It's fucking Lord of the Rings. <laughs> Go home, Gimli. Your kinky fetishes do not need to be in the helm. Get out. Oh, man. Zheng Shu can ally himself with a brand new cast of characters that he meets along the way and then add them to his playable roster. It's due out for the PS4, Nintendo Switch, Xbox One, PC via stream, Steam uh, in uh, October. Ju- oh, no, on July 10th. This uh, is an yeah, old about fucking a... game. A uh, game announcement, I'm sorry. This is from a week ago. This is due out next week. If they have a Bloodstain 1 and 2 bundle pack, I will be getting that bitch. Because, I mean, this was a nifty idea that they had for getting people into Ritual of the Night. Because this game, like, for me, is the much better experience overall. Mm-hmm. Like, this, is, this seems like the more inspired one that he really wanted to make. And I'm super psyched for the second one. Especially both games are coming in at budget prices. I believe the first one was only like 10 or 15 when released. This one's going to be 15 bucks too. And I already, I already pre pre ordered this thing, man. If it's coming out on the tenth, I'm ready to go. Let's play this fucking thing. I'm super geeked for it. <clears throat> Apparently, I- Igarashi has uh, more intentions to do uh, has more has intentions to do more with this franchise. Uh, he intends to create future games in the series. Um, it was uh, the game has raised more than five million dollars on Kickstarter and was released in June 2019 to favorable critical reception. Um, so yeah, do it. I think there's a steam, there's supposed to be like a steampunk related character in this too, if I remember right. I can't remember the name of them though, but that one looked interesting. But yeah, any, anything that has a theme with Castlevania, down for it. Well, if you can find me a link to all the characters for the new, new game, that'd be awesome. After the have to look that up. So, while you do that, it's time to switch the gears and go to, to the UB tubes. Talk about what we've been watching. Let's see. You want me to take the reins first, or you want to go? Uh, I'll go first, but I'm looking for something. Okay. I think this is it. So I'm sure people have seen this by now. I'm new to the party, so fuck off. It's a video game player called Gary Still Plays. Have you ever uh, heard of this guy? No, I have not. So he does like all these fucking Sim 4 game plays. And I think okay. some of these involve him like hacking something. Um, I, I, I finding new ways of, of like bringing characters in or whatnot. So he did this. Uh, he did this thing where he forced 100 people to live in a tiny house in Sims 4. Um, and the best part was like, there's these two random ass cats that are, that are in this game that he has, and one is like uh, I, I feel uh, Spleen, <laughs> and Spleen the cat yeah. always looks like he's on coke. It's fucking hilarious. He's done a few of these. Like, uh, he had uh, a woman married to 100 men, and, like, he put them in two groups of 50. And, like, whoever, because uh, in, in the game, uh, The Sims, it's, it's called Woohoo when you go and fuck. <laughs> and he's like, you know, whichever, two, uh, whichever guy from each group of 50 woohoos her, we're going to put him in a, uh, an ultimate battle contest, one, uh, 1v1, to find out who can get her in bed the last time around. So it was, it was fuck, it's fucking stupid and silly and, and funny as fuck. He's really good at commentary. They're about 15 minutes long, maybe some more, some less. Uh, I did not expect to enjoy the video as much as I did. My friend sent it to me. I was like, all right, this is, this is actually pretty solid stuff. So, you know, uh, kudos to that. Um, that was good. I, um, I, I, I didn't mean to stop you, but I did find the, list, the name of the characters if you're interested yeah, in knowing what they were. 
Okay, it was it was on it was just in the Wikipedia page. There's just, it it's still last part of the main Bloodstain page. It just tells you who the three of them are. So. Right, well, me... I'll look at it later. <clears throat> uh, I watched uh, Matt McMuscle's Wahopon with Scalebound. Mm. Um, I, I it's, it's fucking the same day, different dance. They had financial issues and they had to cancel the game because it was just too expensive to make anymore. At least this one ended amicably. Like, and even even and I think even he realized that his fucking story is like his fucking uh, series is not done what he had hoped it to do in terms of content wise because he's like this is a reoccurring trend on Wallhopping. I'm like yeah no shit we've been noticing that for about four months now. So, I don't know how much longer the Wahopin series is going to keep going because even he acknowledges that it's the same fucking tale every time he does the story. <laughs> uh, yeah, like, it's, it's like losing its luster at this point. You know what I mean? There's, like, nothing interesting he's telling anymore. Well, I think he, he started to realize, or, or maybe he hasn't realized, but he should, that these stories have, have a, a depreciating value. Mm-hmm. You know, it, the, the returns are starting to not be as worth it because, like... We fucking know. Like, we, we, we know why the game failed. There were problems with development. Usually there was a miscommunication or a disagreement on how the game should be presented. They ran out of money and or forced the game out so they wouldn't lose money. And the game sucked. Like, we know this. It, it's, the, it's the same fucking story. Now, like, if you tell me, like, this game didn't happen because, like, they were kidnapped in Nicaragua, you know, three of them were sold off into sex slavery, uh, 14 were working the coal mines, and like another 22 became resistance fighters and, and saved the entire group, and they got back up, up to the United States and then had two days to finish a game. Okay. I'd listen to that story. But most, at least you got something new to work with. Right? But most of them are just, hey, guess what? We couldn't agree on how to do this. We didn't know how to do this. We wasted all of our money, and now the game's canceled. Oh, what happened? I think we knew. I think we knew. Uh, so let's see. We got uh, how good was Ken Shamrock actually by Keon Keon Kamara. I've been watching a lot of his videos recently. He's really good. Uh, he, he does a great uh, kind of recap of, of a fighter's career, and he tries to use as much footage as possible without breaking any of the UFC guidelines because UFC is a bunch of dick bags. Um, and like I've, I, I, I write, you know, I cover MMA for a living. Like it's, it's one of my jobs. And even I didn't realize how good of a, of a submission wrestler Ken Shamrock was because I, I, I looked up his stats, and, like, he's got, like, 26 wins. Um, but, like, 24 of them or something to that, like, weird-ass effect were all by submission. And I was like, wait, what? <laughs> I, 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 knew, I knew he was good at submission grabbing, but I didn't realize how, I, I, it never hit me. It's like, you know, saying, like, oh, Barry Bonds was really good at hitting the home runs. Well, how many home runs do you have in his career? 700. What? So, like, you oh. know, he's real impressive. Uh, let's see. What else did we watch? Um, Amanda the Jedi reviewed Dummy, uh, which is a real-life true story based off of uh, Dan Harmon and his girlfriend, whose name uh, blank- I'm blanking on at the moment. Uh, apparently, when Dan Harmon started dating this woman, Dan Harmon, the creator of a like, community and Rick and Morty, had a full-size sex doll. <laughs> Whoa. Yeah. And, uh, like, his girlfriend, like, had, like, a lot of issues with it, like, in terms of, like, you know, how it made her feel and shit. So, like, she wrote, like, an entire, like, story about it. And, you know, uh, Queeby made it into a show, or QB, whatever it's called. And uh, Amanda reviewed it. And the show seemed kind of interesting at times, but also really, really preachy. Like, it really kind of centers on the female experience without ever acknowledging the male experience. And I feel like when people have those conversations about how, certain things make people feel they always exclude men. And I don't know why, like we have self-confidence issues. We have self, you know, uh, uh, personal like observational issues that we deal with. Like it's not just Listen a to the show. Thing. You'll know my personal issues all the time. Yeah. Me. <laughs> <laughs> um, but, uh, the show stars Anna Kendrick and Anna Kendrick's a delight. And, um, D- Donald Loge is, uh, Dan Harmon in the show. And I love Donald Loge. Oh, he's awesome. Oh, he's so good in everything. Whether it's, what was that show, Grounded for Life? Oh, he was fantastic, man. He's great in that. Awesome. Or, or as his, him and Harvey Bullock in Gotham, or when he was playing that weird f- former FBI agent in Sons of Anarchy. Like, he's always great. 
He was in Blade, I remember, too, right? Wasn't he yep. in the first Blade movie? Yeah, he had uh, cornrows. Oh, he was fucking all hilarious. Uh, Man. Uh, Sci-Fi Wire posted their next uh, episode of Warp Factor. It was the episode Remember Me. I've actually started to take a shine to this. At first, I found it annoying because the host would always do a Crusher watch because the, the, the mm-hmm. woman's name is Beverly Crusher. And, and like whenever, like, whenever, it didn't matter what episode because Beverly Crusher was only in the Next Generation series. So if he was reviewing a, a series episode from Voyager, he would still do a fucking Crusher watch. And, like, the way he did it was so over the top and annoying. I was like, ugh, God, you're trying too hard. Um, but I, I actually went back and watched the first, because I thought this was, like, an old series. It's not. It's only been around since April. So I went back and watched, like, the first few episodes from the beginning of the, of the recap series, and he explains in the second episode um, the reason why he does the Crusher watch isn't because he has a thing for Beverly Crusher. It's because he has a thing for Beverly Crusher and Picard as being one true loves. And until that day comes, he's, he's not going to rest, and he'll always do a Crusher watch. So I was like, all right, still dumb. That's nice. But I get it. Um, and he actually is like, a, like he's really well read in, in the world of Star Trek. So I think like Sci-Fi Wire, which is the YouTube series or YouTube channel for Sci-Fi, the cable network, I think they got a real gem in this guy, and I've softened on him. He, 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 he's really likable, mostly because he cares about the product. Uh, and I guess the series started when, uh, when Picard happened, like when it came out, um, like January or February, maybe March. Uh, they, they were doing recaps of it. <clears throat> and then when the first season ended, they kept doing recaps. They just shifted gears now towards um, classic episodes, which is something that I do on one of my websites that I write for. I do a classic review every Thursday or Friday, depending on my workload. So, I get it. I get it. It makes sense. That's cool. Uh, let's see. What else did I watch? Uh, I watched a lot of shit, but not a lot of it I thought was any good. A um, lot, lot of boring topics. A lot of not poorly made videos, but just kind of whatever videos. Like, even my favorite spooky ookies, you know, they're not delivering it at the moment. Um, let's see. Unfortunate. Right, like I want me, I want my spooky ookies. Uh, it also seemed like a slow week for content for some reason. Uh, mine's kind of here or there, honestly. Like so, some of the stuff that I watched this week were just kind of news things, and like the, I don't really feel like talking about like, oh yeah, they talked about this news thing that we talked about. Oh, it's super fucking informative. Yeah, like you need to hear it twice, right? Right. Uh, let's see. Um, oh, that sounds like a good story. We'll, we'll save that for later. Uh, I think that's about it. Uh, why, why don't you hop on in? And uh, Oh, oh, actually, uh, yeah. Um, so two, two things, actually. Um, so the Punk Rock NBA posted a video called Breakdowns. And a breakdown is when, uh, in, a, in the middle of a rock song where everything, quote-unquote, breaks down to the simplest melodies. Um, <clears throat> so, like, mm. you, you'll get, like, steady drums and, like, hard riffs, but they'll be melodic and, and repetitive by design. You know, it, like, whenever you hear, like, someone going, dun, 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 like, that's, that's, that's a breakdown. Um, so he, he goes through about 20 minutes of the history of breakdowns and how they have evolved. So if you're into music, that, that's definitely up your alley. I don't play instruments. But like, I even found that interesting. Uh, remember when I was telling you about Only in Japan, that, uh, that YouTube show where the guy was taking around like, like kind of weird, trendy, or like underground, kind of unknown YouTube, uh, uh, Japan sites and whatnot? Yeah, I heard you talking about that. Well, apparently there was drama on the channel. <laughs> oh, boy. The dude's like 40 and there's drama. It's great. Uh, so, the guy, so the people who own the channel are, are a, a Japanese company by the name of Ro... Wow, Ryu. And uh, apparently they had a different direction for the channel than the host did. So they came to an amicable separation. So Wow, uh, Ryu is now doing a new series that's looking at the... Uh, um, they kind of kept it vague, but it kind of seemed like they were going to go with more uh, everyday sites of Japan with a new host. And the guy who did run it... Uh, where is he? Um, I just subscribed to his new channel. Uh, I even watched one of his videos. Where, where, where the fuck are you? Uh, John Dobb. <clears throat> he re- launched his own YouTube channel called John Dobb Only in Japan. 
where he talked about what's uh, like why the, there's a change and everything. Um, and he's basically going to be doing the same fucking shit. Like, you know, he, he even has the same logo. <laughs> he still has the same uh, brand name of, of the Only in Japan, but now it's John Dobb, Only in Japan. So, like, apparently they, they, they're probably still on some decent terms. So we're, we're going to be getting some fresh, fresh content from John Dobb here in a little bit. And I can't wait because, man, finding out all these sweet-ass little, like, little nooks and crannies about Japan has been, like, one of the funnest things for me on YouTube lately. It's just it's a lot of fun mm. to explore a different culture that's so dynamically different than what we are used to. So, I think that's cool as fuck. Makes um, you want to drive. Makes you want to go there even more. Yeah. Oh, and of course, uh, Stop Skeletons from Fighting did the Tiger Game Con, which I actually wanted as a kid and I never got. I like it when he does these videos. These are the ones I always find so interesting. Right. Like when he I'm, just goes I'm like good completely on the weird. Six Sonic videos. I'm good on that kid. Tiger Game Cop, yes, please. Yes, please. <laughs> uh, so that was really good. I like that. Um, I even like the fact that he's like, uh, what was the one game that he really, really liked? Was it Resident Evil 2? Yeah. What, what, did, you talk, what did you say? Resident well, Evil 2, what about it? Well, wasn't that the game he really liked on the Tiger Game Con? Or was that, some, was that a different game? Uh, I don't know if it was. I don't know if it was. It was Duke Nukem he was talking about. I think he really enjoyed on there. He said Resident Evil was kind of an ambitious thing, but it just didn't play very well. well none of them did. Um, and then the Angry Video Game Nerd did a um, the Incredible Crash Test Dummies. And while I'm not a fan of the potty humor and like the need to always go blue, the fact that he literally went and did a parody of the song uh, from the Crash Test Dummies Canadian alt-rock band and put it into the, the video was fan-fucking-tastic. You probably don't even know what the song is, but no, the, I'm not aware of it now. But this, it's 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 literally called mm hmm mm hmm mm, and I, the song kind of goes to the effect like once there was this girl who da 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 she da 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 and it's like what wait what what is this like are you singing are you, like what <laughs> and it was actually like a big hit in in, in the United States in like '93. It's not good. <laughs> but he put it in there. He put it in there. Oh, they gotta get gotta give props where they're due, right? And I swear to God, the song is actually called mm 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 mm. And I remember hearing about it for, for the first time on a um on like an I Love the Nineties on VH1. Remember that? Oh, I remember that show for sure. And like the one guy, the the comedian was like, you know, at, could you imagine having to call into a station and, and, and requesting that song? Yeah, I want to hear mm, 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 by the Crash Test <laughs> Dummies. <laughs> oh, God damn. <laughs> Worst fucking goddamn name of a song I've ever heard in my life. The guy looks and I mean, sounds like Scott Stapp, too, so it's funny. I think in this one, too, because I watched it, too, I, I think he, he does have potty humor in it, but you can tell sometimes he's trying to tone it down more with he's, the character, it looks like. I, I, do, I don't think he is. I think I think that is you hoping he is, because I hoped for that, I too, at one point. <laughs> do you really think it's not? Because I don't know. I didn't. I really don't think I he's. Seem, like, I, I think he's still. Rants. No, he's still going to that pretty hardcore um, blue humor. It's still a staple, and 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 I don't know if it's getting worse historically, but when I got back into him two years ago to now, I have seen either he's returned to it, or he only took a, like an X amount of time off from it, or what have you. But yeah, it's gotten worse. Now, and I don't want to say worse like historically, but over the last year or two. I guess you should be happy to know he's getting rid of the rental review segment. Oh no. <laughs> I'm so sad. When did he announce this? The The last episode they released was the 100th episode, and he said that was going to be the last one they're doing for it. They've done 100 episodes of that dumbass idea where they just stand around talking? Mm -hmm. Yup. Oh, God, your friends suck. Uh, and, of course, I watched the Squirrels and Robots podcast. Where Foamy talks about Batman, anime gifts, Newgrounds, and Flash games. Uh, it's basically 13 minutes of Foamy trying to tell you to go support Newgrounds and download the Flash games before they're gone, because apparently Newgrounds is closing, I guess. I was kind of sleeping when he was talking about it. <laughs> mm -mm. 
Shows your level of interest, that's for sure. I was tired. <laughs> so, um, right. I think that's about it for me. All right, I'll plow through mine really quick because relatively two of them, two of them you just mentioned, were already ones that are going to be on my list. So I'm not; those will just be out of here. I already saw those. Um, let's see, I got a couple videos uh one from my life in gaming they did a full-blown uh look into the uh evercade and we're talking about what disliked and uh liked and disliked about it their big hang-up was the compatibility with the tv issue and the sound issue which is something i've i've experienced so where like the audio doesn't always sync up together when you're removing the cable from the tv going back to the system it's weird but other than that, they really enjoyed the system. They see its purpose, and I do too. And I'm probably going to write a review of it myself, not to mention do an article for it. So that was an interesting one to watch. Um, believe it or not, I actually have been watching Pro Jared videos as of late, and he just released one on Final Fantasy VII. And he actually, there was parts of that where he... He, I think he got it wrong because he was he was talking about certain features of it. Some people were catching on to it, and he was saying like I can't remember what bit of information he was going on, but I'm like that doesn't sound right. But I will agree with him on the fact that he said that even though it's not his favorite, but it is mine. That he does deem it to be the most important for the franchise because of what it built for it. So I. I did like that video. Um, what did he get wrong? Do you remember? On... No, it's oh, it was some little. It was some kind of. Um, oh man, it was something to do with the story, and I forgot like what exact like bit he was referring to in the story. Oh, like oh, okay, he was referring to Cloud um, never being around when Sephiroth was doing the things he was doing. Yeah, he was around, but he like, wasn't. He wasn't. Zach was the one. That was Cloud in all of the early mm-hmm. retellings. Cloud was the guy always in the back. So he was always right, he there. Was soul, he was the Shinra, yeah. he was like the little, mer- like Shinra, like, like little, he, like grunt or soldier or yeah, whatever. Yeah, he, he, was, he was part of the Shinra squad. Mm. So pro Jared so yeah, got that was it the, wrong. Yeah, that was, that was the fact that he got wrong. But I, 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 I do appreciate the fact that, like, at least he deems it an important, an important game in the series because I believe it to be the most important as well, well. Does he not like it? Like, it's it's universally beloved for a reason. Like, that doesn't mean that you mm. have to like it, but like, there's not much to dislike. I I don't remember. I don't remember exactly what it is. I think it was. It had. Um, I think it was his disinterest in some of the characters, other than maybe like. A couple of the main ones that like you could put some like true investment in. I think he said he he really got into like Cloud as a character, and I believe it was um, I want to say it was Air. I want to say it was Era 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 that he got into too. Like those two, but the rest of them he was they he felt like they were all kind of stereotypes and didn't really develop. And I'm like I don't necessarily agree with what you're saying i feel like they had fleshed out stories i don't know what game were you actually playing dude yeah they all actually have real deep fleshed out stories like everyone and i'm about to go on a rant and explain all of them cloud and tifa were childhood friends not so much friends they knew each other um tifa falls off a fucking bridge and cloud goes with her because tifa's the big dumb and Tifa kind of feels a loyalty to cloud because cloud was the only one of the kids in nibelheim to chase her down that could also be predatory behavior, but hey, you know, to each their own. Barrett was a, uh, what was he, a, a Mako miner or, or like a coal miner. And then Something a, like that, yeah. a, a Mako reactor is going to be built in their town. And Barrett's like, hey, this sounds like a decent idea. And his buddy Dine's like, we need to blow it on up. And Barrett's like, okay, Batman. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shinra guards show up. They shoot everyone in the town. Dine's daughter escapes, uh, but Dine falls off a cliff, losing a hand in the process. Same, to, So does Barrett. And then Barrett starts raising Marlene from an early age. Um, Aerith is the last of her kind and maybe has the least amount of backstory explored because she's also the most mysterious of the characters. She doesn't have a backstory because who knows anything about it? You know, mm. I, I, the only thing you know is that her mom was dying at the same fucking train station that Cloud arrived at uh, to, to go hang with Tifa. 
Uh, Red 13 was the son of a legendary group of warriors. Uh, his father was the last one, uh, and, and his father was th- sought to be a coward, but turns out he was actually defending the caves that they, uh, they live uh, out of. Uh, and still tried, one of my favorite emotional scenes from the game, by the way. That's the, one of my favorite. The favorites. dad is still alive, and they just leave him there. They show that tear, man. They're like, oh, that got to me. Oh, damn it. And, and, and because of, of the revelation from Nanakai, or no, no, he's Nanakai. Uh, what's, the, what's the grandfather's name? Budenhagen? Bugenhagen. B- Bugenhagen. Bugenhagen. Uh, yeah. fr- the revelation of Bugenhagen, you know, frees uh, uh, Red, thir- Red 7, Red 13, Red 13, of all of his... Uh, all of his angers and fears. Uh, Sid wants to go into space, uh, but he keeps getting dicked over by Shinra. His uh, lovely assistant is clearly in love with him, but he can't put two and two together. Yuffie is the, I think she's like an expelled, expelled daughter of the uh, kingdom of Wutai. Is it Wutai or Utani? Uh, Wutai. Wutai. Sorry, I had it. A uh, real bad acid reflux kick up. Mm. I can taste it. Ew. Yeah, it's Ew. gross. Never, um, never good, man. So she's trying to become a, a great thief to impress her family. At least I think that's the arc. Um, she's one of the uh, additional play along characters, and I never liked going to Utani. Because, like, the only thing to do in Utani is to do that fucking dungeon crawler mission where you gotta, like, fight all the levels. Oh, fuck that noise. Oh. Uh. So, so stupid. Hated that one. But, like, her father is disapproving of her, and, and, like, she has to do that challenge to get his approval or some shit. Fucking Vincent was in love with the woman who would bear the Sephiroth genome baby. Uh, like, what stories were you not finding, dude? Right? Come on. And, and that's just them. The like, fuck? fucking, there's Sang, there's Reno and Rude, uh, fucking, uh, fuck, fuck, like, Jesus Christ, man. Did he play like disc one and just not get through anything else? Because fuck. I think he's just one of those guys. He's such a Final Fantasy fan that he thinks like, oh, Final Fantasy seven can't be the best because it's the most popular. And if it's the most popular, that means it's the dumbest. Yeah. Don't be a don't don't be a pro, Jared. <laughs> That's what exactly what I was just thinking. Fuck. <laughs> Uh, Jason Schaefer says, you forgot a major reason it was so impactful. The world building, you start as an eco-terrorist. A huge novelty that adds complexity from the beginning. Each major, actually, that's not even true. You start as a hired gun. Right. (sighs) When you're trying to correct someone, make sure you don't fuck it up in the first sentence. Yeah, get your fact, get your fact check straight, man. Jesus. Jesus. Um... And I got to disagree with about Vincent, too. He might not have developed much in the main story, but his backstory is pretty important. Kate Sith, too, to a lesser extent. Kate Sith literally keeps people alive, man. Like, he's, he's a member of Shinra, and he's making sure you don't die. I was going to say, yeah, wasn't he, like, wasn't the whole thing about him being, like, an under, he was working undercover with it or something? He was, like, spying on them? Is that the whole reason he had that suit? Yeah, essentially. Okay. I disagree with your take on the ending concerning the fact that the uncertainty as to whether humans are good for the planet is brought up when Holy is introduced. The fact that no human appears in the end game after that point when Holy interacts with Meteor adds room for speculation as to whether the planet actually considered humans good for it and let them live on, which in my opinion is somewhat weakened by the media taking place afterwards where the main characters appear. Um, Yeah, some people just shouldn't have an opinion because that one's stupid. It's just fucking stupid. Damn. Uh, I can agree with the assessment of not the best, but the most important. Nope. Sorry, you're wrong. Stole striking staff. Uh, Jared tries to advise a VPN to a compact, co- compact disc. Odd note, but I kind of find... Odd note, but I kind of want that Loveless movie poster hanging up on my wall. Uh, his clouded memory trying to clear itself. Why do you think they named him Cloud? Jared. Final Fantasy VII gave birth to Tetsuya no- Nomuro. I don't, I don't get that reference. <laughs> Sorry. Me neither. Uh, disagree with this, uh, the Zach statement. The secret scene with him in the truck shows that he's really a goofy guy based on a short conversation in the truck. It's like you didn't even play the game, Jared. 
Cloud was present at most of the events in Nibelheim as one of the most uh, generic troops, even if he wasn't the one doing them. Tifa never knew that he was there because he was too embarrassed and not making it into soldier, soldier to show his face. And in the end, Cloud is still the one who kills Sephiroth in the Mako reactor, which means Cloud may actually have done the things he remembered doing. They weren't directly involved with Tifa, Zack, and Sephiroth, and Tifa would never know about. So here's the thing. Um, Cloud does kill Sephiroth. Like, mm-hmm. and there's three or four different pieces of property that explain this. After Zack tries to confront Sephiroth in the Mago reactor, and, and Tifa gets cut down, Cloud picks up Zack's buster sword and confronts Sephiroth, but Sephiroth impales Cloud. And Cloud's showing his determination because he is the hero of the story, and he does have a special quality about him, and it's introduced in that scene. Cloud grabs Sephiroth's long-ass sword that should not work in, in the realms of physics, and pulls himself through the sword to the uh, the hilt, grabs the hilt and Sephiroth, and Sephiroth being shocked that this little punk ass blonde dude who's five foot seven did just did that, and then chucks Sephiroth into the side of the uh, the Mako reactor where he goes fucking bananas. As in to say bye bye, and that's been shown three or four different times in in, in the canon of the uh, Final Fantasy VII. So I, I really don't know what the fuck they're talking about. By the by, do you remember that Final Fantasy VII was one of the first games to have a mobile game? At least a big I brand do mobile that. game. Yeah, I think that came out like what two thousand six. Yeah, that in the era of the flip phone. Uh, I miss the flip phones. Not even gonna lie. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yeah. So that 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 video threw me through a loop because there was so much he was missing. I'm like, did he just like rush this? It felt like he just rushed the video. You know what I mean? Just for the sake of having a Final Fantasy VII video. Well, like, all right, so, you know, they're saying that, like, I actually like the ending of Final Fantasy, so obviously he doesn't like the ending. But, like, the, the ending of Final Fantasy VIII is ambiguous because, like, you die in the halfway through the game, and do you actually die? Then, like, you have, like, what, 12 and 12.2 or whatever the fuck they're called. Those are just terrible. Fucking incomprehensible. Um, the one where you're, like, a, a... Oh, fuck, which one was it? Um, I think it was, like, 10... Yeah, you're thinking because you're saying you're saying two attached to it, and I'm like, there's only two series I know of that have done multiple iterations, and it's the it's ten, and I believe it's thirteen that did it. Well, let, let let me pull up a, a list here so that way I can get these right. Okay. Google takes a second while I'm streaming. Nope. Uh, can I just get like a, a list of games? I don't want like every fucking Final Fantasy thing that's ever existed, Wikipedia. Mm. And I also just want the covers. Because that's how I remember them. <laughs> All right. Mm-hmm. So let's see. Starting with 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, 15. Uh, let's see. So, 7 ends with some disambiguity. You don't know what actually happens at the end. Um, why, 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 why must we have the shitty in-game logo instead of the actual cover? 9 was the one with the goofy-ass characters and the big night, and it was dumb, but people like it, so I guess that's cool. Uh, 10 was the one where you were like pulled out of time or some bullshit and you ended up in like a different reality and, and, and like they introduced voice acting, which was a, a mistake. <laughs> uh, oh yeah. Cause it wasn't good. <laughs> oh, it wasn't. Final Fantasy 11 was online. I know pro Jerry ain't about to make the case for that game. Maybe he will. He seems like the kind of guy who would make bad case, for bad games. Final Fantasy he 12. He played a lot of 14, so it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> Final Fantasy XII was just dumb. The characters were all the fucking same looking. Like, Jesus Christ. Uh, 13's the same to me, man. Legacy? Is that what it's called? The other MMORPG? Isn't, isn't, for for isn't, Final Fantasy? Yeah, isn't that what 13 is? The other online game? Or is that 14? 13, no, no, yeah. 14 was the one that had online. Uh, 14 is the other one that has online. And then, of course, you have 15, which... 
pretty fucking disambiguous as well. Uh, you, you fucking fight the dude, and then you flash back to a fucking campfire scene, then you flash forward, and then you're all dead. But you're not dead. You're in a different reality with your girl, and it's just like, what? So, yeah, basically all of these games are terrible. Or great, I don't know. It just feels like Seven is still the one that just you can still connect with well, on, se- as far as terms of story goes. Seven was complicated but simple. In terms of it was a complicated story but it's simple mechanics. It had unique enough characters but not so unique that you need to spend 100 hours with each one to understand who they are. The music was fantastic. The only complaint, the only two complaints I have about Final Fantasy VII are the game play mechanics in, in the battles and the constant need to grind. That's it. Dead, when that's dead. your only hang-ups, that makes for a great game, honestly. Cool. Uh, did you watch anything else? Um, the only other one I'll mention is because we've talked about him before on here. Uh, he's the guy who created the Boundary Break series, uh, She Says. He did a, he kind of did a different video this week because his most recent videos, I've been telling you, he's been doing Animal Crossing recently. Um, his most recent one actually got taken down by Nintendo uh, for, I believe it was for, I can't remember exactly what it was, maybe his copyright issues, but it's the first one he's ever had taken down by them. He actually put a video up saying that, you know, can can I get the video back? I've had nothing but love for this company. I... He's like, I can see why my video kind of blurs the lines between things. Maybe you don't understand where I'm coming from with what I'm sharing, but I'm not trying to tell people to cheat. I'm just trying to tell people that look at the cool things I can find that make our games more interesting. So I kind of felt it kind of was a hard thing to watch him go through that because it feels like he puts a lot of passion behind this stuff. And I hope it works. I really hope it works out for him. I really do. Well, but. I'm of the mindset that we all know what Nintendo's about, and if you're going to make games about or make videos about Nintendo games, mm-hmm. I mean, you play with fire, you're going to get burned, kid. Yeah, yeah, no no question. Like, this isn't new. No. All right, anything else? Nope, uh, that about covers it. All right. Uh, RealNerdCorp.com, R-E-A-L-N-E-R... N E R D C O R P. Uh, we're on Instagram at nerdcorp, N E R D C O R P. We are on, nope, I flipped that. Twitter is N E R D C O R P. Instagram is Real Nerd Corp. Website is Real Nerd Corp. Uh, Twitch.tv backslash comic and game core. Matt, you can be found on your personals where? Uh, Twitter at M Nerd Corp. Twitch at the same handle. And you can find me on uh, Twitter at Chad Nerd Corp and on Instagram at Chad's Photo Hut. You can also find us on Spotify, iTunes, and Podbean, links of which should be either down below or on the website at realnerdcorp.com. So, yeah, for Matt, I'm Chad. Yeah, Matt, I don't know. Finish up the show. You want me to have a shitty ending? I always have them. (laughs)